Hello and welcome to Let's Play Space Quest 1, The Sarian Encounter. If you watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I like sci-fi, I like comedy, and I like Sierra games. So it shouldn't surprise you uh, that much to learn that the Space Quest games, which are sci-fi, comedy, Sierra games, are amongst my favorite games. Unlike when I did Police Quest 1, I'm actually going to play a VGA remake here. Um, this is for two reasons. It's because the VGA version is actually the first version of this game that I ever played, so it has more nostalgic value for me. And also because this game has awesome music. Uh, as with my previous Sierra Let's Plays, I'll be recording the music from my Roland MT32. So you can hear it the way it was meant to sound. Much better than the Adlib version. Alright, let's uh, begin. Gotta wait for the game to send some programming data to the MT32, of course. And it's giving the insert buckazoid message on the MT32's LCD display. In our story, the crew of the Arcada is returning home to Xenon after a successful mission developing the Star Generator. Exhilarated by their accomplishments, they are oblivious to the fact that a sinister craft approaches rapidly from behind. A somewhat spastic resource droid blows by in a tiz. Perhaps you could provide some relaxation therapy instruction to reduce its level of tension. 
Um, yeah, people, that's as close as you're going to get to a, a Gary Owens impression. Uh, Gary Owens, for those of you who don't know, is the narrator in Space Quest 4 and Space Quest 6. And he's awesome. Fortunately, you'll have to do with me in these uh, older games without voice versions. You're startled by the sound of an alarm. Breaking through it, the intercom crackles with the frightened voice of a technician shouting that the Arcada has been boarded by unknown intruders. The transmission ends abruptly in a soundstorm of white noise, soon overtaken by the cold din of silence. Distract sequence is engaged. Fifteen minutes till detonation. Uh-oh, that does not sound good. It's also the only digital speech in the entire game. Um, no better way to start off a game than with a time limit. Well, at least unlike uh, Kings Quest 3, this game actually tells you that you have a time limit. And it is kind enough to actually pause it as long as you uh, have text on screen. Or uh, bring up the icon bar. Now this game pretty much works like every other Sierra game, except it has two um, icons that you may not have seen in other games. Smell and taste. These icons serve absolutely no purpose whatsoever, except to give you some humorous comments. And there are a lot of those, and I'm gonna try and um, show you as many of them as possible. But um, also try and keep uh, some sense of progress. So if I miss some of the ones that you thought were really funny, I apologize. The intro actually doesn't really do a good job of uh, explaining the backstory. Apparently, the short version is that uh, this planet Xenon, its sun was uh, dying, and so they developed a device called the Star Generator to turn a dead planet into a new sun. And this ship, the uh, USS Grill Chicken, um, I mean the Arcada, um, was sent to test it. Unfortunately, some bad guys named the Sarians, who were flying the giant uh, space grasshopper, got wind of this and they want to use it as a weapon, sort of like the Genesis device in Star Trek II. So, um, they've now captured us. And we are playing as this guy. It's you, Roger Wilco, Janitor Sub Extraordinaire. Doesn't that just make it ordinary? Anyway, um,. Yes, we are a janitor, which is rather an unusual role for a hero in a game to be uh, cast as. Not just any janitor, we are uh, not a very good one, and also a very lazy one, and a stupid one to boot. Yeah. This is the access device to your favorite area of the ship, the closet because we were actually taking a nap in the closet on shift. Hence the reason why we survived this attack. Um, unlike this guy down here, who was rather less lucky. Well, let's see where we are. We're gonna have to um, get out of here as well. Before the time limit runs down, preferably. Otherwise, we are dead. Uh, before we do so, however, let's raise the detail, because, I mean... This computer is 20 years newer than the, uh, the state of the art when this game was released, so it should be able to run with maximum detail, and we're going to increase the speed a bit. Um, not too much, though, because I still want to be able to actually see what animations look like. Alright, you are currently loitering on one of the upper deck hallways aboard the starship Arcada. And yes, it is actually pronounced Arcada. It says so in the manual. I thought it was Arcada for a very long time, but it's apparently Arcada. The light's flashing. Hmm, let's see. That seems to ring a distant bell. Oh yeah, now you remember. It means that all the living things now aboard the ship could die due to some disaster situation that currently exists. Whatever the case, some personal height preservation is in order. You aren't on that level. Oh, okay. We're not allowed to look at things that we can't see, which is sort of uh, against convention in these kinds of games. 
And like I said, we can uh, smell and taste things for no particular reason. The odor you're producing causes you to regret skipping last month's shower. Not everything has a smell, as you can see. You take a whiff and notice a smell common to electronics which haven't had power applied to them in quite a while. So having red alerts declared is apparently not a common situation aboard this ship. Taste also works on various random things. Better not, you're likely to get a fur ball. Boy, was that a bad idea. Your tongue now bears a residue left behind by adventurers who, like yourself, have shown a need to press various and sundry organs against the sign. Great! Oh well, we'll uh, see if we can get off this ship before it blows up in the next video. Welcome back. Well, we have only 14 minutes left until this uh, ship blows up, so we'd better get working on getting out of here. It seems that a lot of our colleagues were not quite so fortunate, judging by that body over there. Hmm, now where are we? This is the data archive of the Arcada, an interesting array of devices, none of which you know how to operate are provided for data study by those with proper clearance. Which I'm quite sure we don't have. The data cartridges are stored in the secured storage modules. This is a Model DX cartridge retrieval unit. Its function is to retrieve and return cartridges from and to the storage unit. It is currently empty. Looks like there's a computer console here. This is the operation console of the Data Archive Unit. There's a CRT and chair. A CRT? Wow, state-of-the-art technology. Does anything here smell? I wouldn't be violating his airspace if I were you. Nothing else, I think. Nope. Can we taste him? I guess the same message. Oh well, uh, let's see if we can do anything with this computer thingy. Looks like the CRT is, uh, broken. Somebody wasted the CRT. And we get a keypad with a bunch of... symbols. These buttons allow you to enter a code into the computer. Now, if you have the manual to this game, you'll know that these symbols are used for two things. They can either represent, um... Uh, cartridges from the Arcada Planetary Reference Library catalog. Or they can represent navigational grid codes. Well, considering that this is the library room, I'm uh, guessing that this is the former usage. Well, we can try one of these codes, uh, but it will quite likely uh, not work, unless I happen to guess the right one. Um, let's try the top one, which is uh, the on the topic of asteroids, apparently. Which is this code. Cartridge title, not found. Oh well. I'll have to uh, find some uh, way to know which cartridge we need. Or we could just try all of them, but no, we don't have that kind of time. Of course, this is part of the uh, copy protection that you have to have the manual to know these codes. It's something that Sierra liked to do uh, back in the early 90s. Well, um, oh, the door opens. A man you recognize as one of the head lab scientists stumbles into the room. He appears to be in serious need of some aptoseal abdomen filler. Uh oh, he doesn't look good. After only a few steps, he hits the floor with a disconcerting thud. He seems to be beckoning us. A large laser hole has been burnt in his uniform, giving you a nice view of previously unexposed tissue. Struggling painfully, he props himself up on one elbow. Can we talk to him? His lips move. 
The star generator is in danger. The Arcada is under attack. You'd better get off this scow if you value your life, Wilco. Just before a system sees all functions short of decay, he looks over towards the shelves full of cartridges and utters, Van Ellen belts. With one last gasp, his lifeless form slumps to the floor. <laughs> but he gave us the name of a cartridge. Uh, Van Allen belts is actually one of the topics listed in the manual for the, uh, the cartridges. Does this body Ten smell like anything? Uh-oh. Better get a move on. He didn't smell all that great when he was alive. You wouldn't want to do that. Trust me. Okay, well, let's see if we can get this Van Allen Belt's uh, cartridge. And again, we have to refer to the man uh, manual to get the code. Um, this T-like thing, and then this uh, H-like thing. And this T-like thing again, and whatever the hell this is supposed to look like. Cartridge found, now retrieving. I have no idea what's important about Van Allen belts. Uh, there are actually a radiation belt around the Earth. But uh, I'm guessing it must be important if the scientists uh, felt it was necessary to say that just as he was dying. Hey, there goes the uh, cartridge retrieval robot. Seems like a bit of a waste of an entire robot. No, can't even look at him. Let's take the cartridge. Now, it would be nice to see uh, what we could do with this cartridge. Uh, what's on it. Uh, fortunately, because the monitor is broken... Cartridge viewing on this system has been rendered impossible. So, I guess we'll have to find a working monitor somewhere if you want to know what's on this cartridge. Alright, let's get a move on and try and actually escape. Let's see... Nothing here except another red alert sign and an elevator. You hear footsteps. Oh, yeah. That means that um, you need to get away quickly. Because if you don't, those Sarian guards will shoot you. It's all that remains of Jerry, one of the few Technodutes aboard who sometimes tolerated your company. Your low clearance excluded you from visiting him during the performance of his duties in the elegant lower level airlock of the Arcada. Does he smell like something? He smells like Jerry. I don't think you want to. Re you really want to taste Jerry, but then who knows? Well, it's a body in a uh, Sierra game, so we'd better search him, see if he has anything. You search Jerry's body and find a key card. Oh, that's uh, useful. And oh, we now have a cartridge. It's a cartridge from the Arcadas. Data Archive. This keycard fits an electronic lock someplace on the Arcada. And what are these things? You have three Buckazoids. Buckazoids are the unit of currency in the Space Quest universe. Um, let's see. Let's go down the uh, elevator. You hear footsteps. Well, because we got this message while still on the upper deck, they will appear on the upper deck, so we don't need to worry. Because we're on the lower deck, and then they can't see us. Now we can't look at the guards because we're not on that level. Let's see who these two uh, fine fellows are. Oh. Failing to notice anyone or anything in the room, the Sarian guards decide to check elsewhere. Way to go, Roger. A cursory glance indicates that Dave, a lab technician, is dead. Normally you wouldn't be able to tell, except that his intestines are hanging out of the scorched opening where his abdominal wall used to be. You remember that he was forced to serve in the Xena National Guard, but he wasn't bitter. Well, that's a good thing then. Gee, he doesn't smell bitter. Taste him. 
Hmm, still not bitter, just like you thought. <laughs> yeah, like I said, smelling and tasting, usually used for silly jokes. Like this one. This is one of the head research scientists, Blanche. You wanted to get to know her a little better. However, seeing her ruptured chest wall reveals more about her than you were hoping to learn. Hey, she's wearing that really great perfume again. Eau de pain. Hey, keep your tongue to yourself, slime ball. Okay, okay. Let's see if any of these guys is uh, carrying anything. Your search of plants reveals nothing even you'd carry. Your search of David reveals nothing even you'd carry. Oh, well, let's uh, see if there's anything in here. This is the door to the top secret star generator lab. It's been forcibly, forcibly ventilated. Well, let's see what we can find in here. Oh no! You're standing on the research platform where the star generator is, was, mounted for testing. The base of the star generator research pedestal has apparently been trashed by the vandals who stole the generator. Okay, so the uh, Sarians got the star generator, which um, I'm guessing is not a good thing. We'll have to uh, deal with that problem, though, in the next video. Welcome back! We've found the star generator, or rather, we haven't. Because it's been stolen. This is the star generator development laboratory. Due to your incredibly low security clearance, you have never had access to this room. What a mess. Wreckage clutters the middle of the floor. A pair of lab workers have been blasted from the roster of the living. You're glad somebody else has to clean this up. Now you know why you didn't have clearance to this place. You don't understand what most of this crap does. This looks like a giant speaker for the cosmos. Let's see if uh, this guy has anything of interest. The lifeless body of Randy, one of the lab technicians, lies sprawled at your feet. Those laser blasts are nasty. Why? You can't distinguish one exposed organ from another. Does he smell like anything? Randy's recently re-exposed and reheated lunch smells pretty good. You start to regret having slept through lunch. Ew? Although it's darn tempting, all this tension is your stomach churning. The last thing you need is more stomach acid. Especially from someone else's stomach. Quiet. Does he have anything we can use? Your search of the body reveals nothing. Well, there's a blinking thing here. You find a small but heavy device affixed to the base of the star generator platform. It appears to be magnetic. This must be how the aliens upset the force field protecting the unit. Well, that could be useful, if we ever need to get through some force fields or something. And it looks like a, a magnet. It's a genuine widget. You're not sure what it does, but it's heavy. It looks cool and it might be magnetic. Please keep this away from the game discs. Of course, uh... I'm actually playing this collection, which comes on CDs, not on discs. Anything else here? This is a star chart. It was used for locating candidates to test the star generator on, uh, to test the star generator on once the bulk of the development process was completed. Like uh, SETI Alpha 5, I guess. Or SETI Alpha 6, or something. Um, what are these uh, things? The glass globe atop the console is inactive at this time. The mess of wiring inside reminds you of how your hair looks after a nap. This thing looks like it came up the front end of an old Studebaker. Or maybe the Batmobile. Anyway, it appears non-functional at this time. It was probably damaged in the heist. It does sort of look like the front end of the Batmobile from the uh, Tim Burton movies. How about him? Yet another crewman's motionless body reduces the shine of the floor wax. Hugh doesn't look too neat and clean with his lungs hanging out like that. Hmm. I think Hugh might have missed a shower or two. Or perhaps his body got sweaty from the heat of that laser blast. 
Either you have a taste for sweat, or you didn't smell him before you tried to taste him. <laughs> Most of the dead bodies actually give you a funny message, which is why I'm smelling and tasting all of them. Alright, well, uh, definitely no way off the ship through here, so I guess... Oh, got another droid. What those droids do, nobody knows. You hear footsteps, which doesn't matter because we already got off the screen. And there's another dead body here. This is Stuart, one of your crewmates. He appears to be non-functional. You used to kid him about it when he was alive, but now it's true. Oh, damn it, footsteps. To get the hell out of here. On second thought, maybe you shouldn't wipe your nose in Stuart's clothes. That's not what I wanted to do. What the hell is up with the footsteps on this room? Oh, that's really sick. You really should seek professional help. Um, no, I'd rather just go down this, uh... Again with the footsteps. Well, let's just see if I can make it to the elevator. And I did! Hmm, now where are we? Lower decks, by the looks of it. This is a section of one of the lowered levels of the Arcada. It appears to be some sort of wiring harness. You never cared much for electrical hardware. This monitor gives a readout about the ship's status. Only the lab scientists really knows, uh, knew exactly what it monitored. A pair of viewing ports protrude from the materials testing device. A designer conduit system runs through here. It carries ventilation ducting as well as different types of wiring. How interesting. Does anything here smell? I don't think so. Nope. Let's head over to the right. Five. Only five minutes left. Oh no. And here you actually need to go over here to hide. Otherwise you can never get past this room because there will always be footsteps. These guys look scary, but then, don't most other beings packing weapons? Failing to notice anyone or anything in the room, the Syrian guards decide to check elsewhere. Way to go, Roger. This is an interesting room. This place looks like a monument to Soviet computer hardware miniaturization. At one time, it served as a development facility for the Star Generator, but that was in the early phase of the project. Because, yeah, the things in this room sort of look like, uh computer peripherals. Here we have a nice chunk of floor space dedicated to a cursor control device named after an annoying rodent. What were they thinking? This keyboard was used in the development of the star generator. It has since been placed here to be out of the way. It has no function. The view screen offers a glimpse of the surroundings from outboard cameras. They came in handy during the testing phase of the star generator. And this looks like a joystick. The architects must have been low on oxygen when they came up with a design scheme for this compartment. It's a giant tribute to an ancient but still functional control device. On the screen is some green dude you've never seen the likes of. He seems to be talking, but the audio is out in this area of the ship. Does he smell like anything? It's a TV picture, remember? Oh, right. Hey, you don't know where this thing has been. Indeed I don't. I don't think it's a good idea to be doing that kind of thing to someone else's joystick. Is that anyone new? Funny, it doesn't smell like a rodent. Good thing that isn't a real mouse, or you'd be hacking up fur balls. Oh, we already did that one. Oh well, uh, we still need a way out of here. We only have four minutes left, so I better get... Uh, I better get going a bit quicker, Raimi. Hmm. Through this window you can see down into the pod bay. 
A pod sits waiting on the launch track. The large bay doors are currently closed. Well, that sounds like it could be a way out of here. Let's see. These buttons are locked in position. It's probably just as well. You might live longer due to having no clue as to their purpose. What is this thing? Bay doors. This is the button pad for the bay doors below. The controls are located up here to minimize the chance of someone doing something stupid, such as pressing open while the pod while in the pod bay when wearing no pressure suit. You should be glad. Hey, are you calling me stupid? Oh wait, I am. Uh, or at least Roger is. Open the pod bay doors, hell. Four minutes. Kill detonation. The large bay doors are currently open, exposing the vast reaches of space. What the hell is this thing? You always meant to ask one of the technicians what this thing is. However, you procrastinated a bit too long in this case. It's either an ocean in a bottle, or a model of your stomach as the deadline draws near. This is yet another in a long line of elevators in this game, uh, ship. This is a keycard slot. Your bottom of the food chain type clearance has always prevented you from attaining a keycard for this area, thus precluding your access to it without an escort. Good luck finding one now. Oh, we did actually find a keycard, so that might help. You slide the keycard into the slot. The lock releases with a satisfying click and the elevator doors slide open. Okay, looks like the access to the uh, uh, shuttle bay. These large red doors serve as the airlock entrance which empties out the, the pod bay. The control panel has many confusing gauges on it. The only one you can read says, Caution! Launch bay decompressed. Which means we'd probably uh, better not go in there without a pressure suit or something. What's this thing? It looks like the logo of the Terran Empire from the Star Trek episode Mirror Mirror! The image on the closet door looks familiar, but you can't quite place it. Wait, I did just place it. It's a closet, so what's in it? A spacesuit hangs in a closet. A helmet sits on the top shelf. Well, if we want to go into that depressurized airlock, I guess we'd better wear that. There's a button above the rectangular object below. Hmm. Well, let's press the button. You notice some sort of gadget in the drawer. Let's see, some sort of gadget. This is some sort of gadget. You're not sure what it does exactly, but it has a switch. Um, switching it on now is not a good idea though, because it, I think it can run out of power. If you want to have some clue um, of what this thing does, look at the top. It looks like a babelfish. Anyway, we'll continue in the next video. Welcome back. Well, the clock is inexorably ticking towards um, destruction, so we'd better get out of here. Does anything here have a smell? Three minutes. Kill detonation. Nope, it does not. So let's just uh, head on out. Fortunately, with the spacesuit, we are um, okay out here. Uh, without space it would have exploded, which is not entirely scientifically accurate, but this is a Space Quest game, what did you expect? Beyond the yawning doors lies the serenity of deep space. This is the cavernous vehicle bay. An escape pod rests on launch rails at the end of the platform. Bay doors at the end of the rails allow access to the emptiness beyond. Take a look at the pod. A giant silver pill-shaped pod sits poised to fire much like a bullet in the chamber of an ancient pistol. Some alien anchor being is broadcasting a message about the stolen star generator. Oh, we already saw that. Does anything here smell? I guess not, because, well, we're uh, 
wearing a spacesuit, which makes it very difficult to wear to smell things. These powerful pyron wheeze pump drives propel the po pod. Well, we better get in the pod and get out of here before we blow the hell up. Okay, um, let's see. Through the open bay doors you can see a plethora of stars. This is your head. This is your head in a fishbowl. Oh. The inside of the Arcados escape pod is not exactly packed with the luxurious appointments. However, when it comes to saving one's posteria, the pod is as good as a rolls. The survival kit contains the basics for deep space survival. You don't need that right now. Oh, okay. Um, the seat belt is dummy tested, which ought to suit you just fine. Well, something tells me it's a good idea to use that. Well, uh, let's see. Two. Get out of here. Nothing much will happen without power. Kill detonation. Oh. How about this thing? Three buttons. This is the autonav button. When operative, it allows the pod to navigate to the closest habitable planet. This button is not to be pushed at any time. That's a challenge. This is the power button for the escape pod. Well, let's turn on the power then. And get the hell out of here. You slide the throttle forward. You can feel the arcada start to shake. Thus ends the giant space roasted chicken. But we made it in the nick of time. We're still alive, and um, we need to get so go somewhere. Because well, dr being adrift in the middle of space and uh, in the middle of nowhere does not tend to uh, help your survival uh, chances. Unless somebody with an infinite improbability drive happens to be in the area. Dials galore populate the instrument console of the pod cabin. Does it smell like anything? No. I don't remember what does and does not smell, which uh, means I'll probably end up doing that a lot. Um, well, I want to see what that don't press button does. Maybe it'll just pop up a sign uh, saying don't press this button again. Let's see how many Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy references I can make during this game. Quite a lot. No, not LP4. Um, do not press. There. That should do it. Let's push the button. You have a feeling you shouldn't have pressed that button. Seems fine so far. Nothing wrong happening. Wait, what? It's a castle. This doesn't look like it belongs in a Space Quest game. Ouch, I think we've got some serious organ damage here. All of them, of course, could be easily replaced in the time period from which you've just arrived. However, a quick scenery check reveals that you are now in the Dark Ages. The only transplant you'll get here is from Carcass to spit over flame. As you draw a few final lungfuls of oxygen through your newly acquired sucking chest wound, you gleefully notice your final resting place is near beautiful Nottingham Castle, universally renowned for its inclusion in Sierra's conquest of the Longbow. Oh my goodness, you're shocked to hear some highly inflammatory language making its way into your auditory canals. Must be some uncivilized ruffians in the nearby pub. Well, you're dead again. We even warned you not to push that button. You have no one to blame you but yourself for having to sit through a plug for another fine Sierra product. Maybe you'll follow directions next time. Thanks for playing and all that stuff. Yay! Sierra does like plugging their other games. I think in the original 
uh, Space Quest 1, if you did this, you actually ended up in Daventry in King's Quest, rather than Conquest of the Longbow. So I wonder why they didn't do that here. Uh, they could have just, uh, I don't know, let you end up in Daventry for King's Quest 5 or something, which was made uh, before this game, just before this game. Oh well, for some reason they wanted to uh, plug Conquest of Longbow, I guess. Oh well, um, let's try the auto nav button instead this time. Might actually have um, better results. That shows a diagram of a planet called Corona, which I think is a play on Corona, the Mexican beer. One thing I like is that the music is actually subtly different from when you push the uh, don't press button. Well, no time warps this time from the looks of it. Just a very um, Tatooine resembling planet. You call that a landing? Well, any landing you can walk away from. Although it remains to be seen whether we can actually uh, walk away from this one. Thank you for flying Arcada Getaway Pot Lines. It's nearly been a pleasure serving you. Tell a friend, if you've got one. Hey, where'd the uh, survival kit go? This place does not look very friendly. Through the fractured pot window you see utter desolation spread out before you. You suddenly feel very lonely. Well, I guess we'd better get out, which is a lot easier to do if you're not wearing a seatbelt. You think that if you weren't wearing your seatbelt, you'd get smashed through the glass or something like that. Well, this is certainly uh, interesting. Loitering about the horizon is the second and closest moon of Corona. It is much less hospitable than the sphere you presently roam. And I'd say this one uh, is only barely hospitable, so it must be terribly bad then. In the distance rises a unique formation of mountains. They look to be hundreds of kilometers away. Either that, or they're actually just paintings in the distance put up by uh, Kadish. The engines seem to have performed their jobs well. They will now stand silent for eternity. The pulse windshield is cracked, but beyond repair. The built-in plastic seal film between the glass layers managed to keep the shield in place, with one minor exception. Despite the shocks from the landing, if that's what you want to call it. That's interesting. And hey, that looks like the survival kit. The rocket landing liberated the survival kit from its mounted fixture. Mounting fixture. Well, let's uh, take that with us. I mean, this looks like the kind of place where you'd need a survival kit now, don't you? Does this place smell like anything? No. Damn it. I want more funny smell messages. A survival kit. Well, what's in it? Upon opening the survival kit, you discover a Xenon army knife and a canister of dehydrated water. Dehydrated water? How the hell does that work? Oh well, best not to think about it. It's a Xenon army knife. The can label says Pelvitron dehydrated water, H2. There's actually just hydrogen then. All you do is add air. Makes 10 gallons. Caution, do not attempt to open or rupture container. Misuse could result in personal injury and or flash flooding. Okay, dangerous then. But, considering this place looks like a desert, uh, I'm guessing this will be a very useful thing to have. The game also tried to uh, uh, try to draw our attention to this shard of glass right there. Oh, let's look at it first, actually. A chunk of the highly reflective windscreen rests on the sand at the front of the pod. It, along with your teeth, was jarred loose as a result of the landing's impact. Well, you uh, never know what that could be useful for. It's very, very reflective, apparently. It's that highly reflective piece of broken cockpit glass. 
So it is. Uh, we'll continue in the next video. Welcome back. We have escaped the Arcana only to end up here on this desolate planet. This ridge of sand helped stop the pod. And we crashed it, so we're not using it to get anywhere else. Let's just hope there's some kind of settlement on this planet or something that can help us uh, get off it. Because, quite frankly, I'm not ready to die. Uh, Alright, let's see what else is here. Uh, oh, oh yay. That's, uh, that doesn't look good. I guess we'd better not wander too far or this thing will uh, kill us. You're at the northwest boundary of a massive skeletal structure. Sand stretches out in all other directions. A wide selection of skeletal accessories awaits your perusal. Vertebrae, ribs, and who knows what else rest upon the Coronian soil. The average height of this structure looks to be at least seven meters. Good thing you didn't meet this thing in its heyday. <coughs> yeah. Sorry. Um. I would not have wanted that. Probably, uh, maybe a sandworm type thing like the one we just saw. It's the same message. Were you a proctologist, you might know what these oddly shaped bones are called. Y to you, though, they're just bones. Oddly enough, a plant grows in isolated spots on this inhospitable environment. Can we take some? You sm snag a small cluster of leaves from the gooey plant. That stuff sticks worse than the Fortnite old undergarments. It's a good thing your gloves are Teflon coated. Fortnite old undergarments. Thanks for that mental image. Does the plant smell like anything? You take a whiff of the plant and find it to be a regrettable experience. However, it does have an aroma reminiscent of a smell vision movie production of our friend the Polymoss Shrub. Nature's Bondo. You vaguely remembered something about it having an odd adhesive properties. It tells me that eating it is probably not a good idea. Do that and you'll never utter another stupid syllable in your life. On second thought, yeah, that would actually be an improvement. The planet itself does not have any smell. Oh well, let's um, move on. More uh, skeletal thingies. And another pit of plant, but nothing else. Let's see if we can follow the bones. The bones, though utterly dehydrated, still bear too much mass for the puny likes of you to displace. These bones have had the smell baked right out of them by centuries of relentless Coronian sun. Any soft tissue was long ago ingested by the local parasites. While it might make one heck of a soup bone, it bears no other appeal to your palate. Whatever. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot an object hurtling from the greenish atmosphere towards the parched surface you currently occupy. Uh oh, what could that be? Oh. Great, and I'm really close to it as well. Rats! If the eyes don't deceive, that's a Syrian spider droid. They must have detected the escape pod leaving the Arcada. The spider droid must have been sent along to settle any unfinished business. After the jarring impact, small panels open through which legs sprout. You recall reading in an old issue of Space Piston magazine that this droid was designed to seek out organic life forms and to self destruct when a close proximity of the target had been achieved. And that's definitely bad news for us. Like I said, that's bad news.
How convenient! You've been blown into handy bite-sized chunks. I guess that Space Piston article wasn't fiction. There's nothing quite like stretching out and enjoying the wide open spaces. Well, that didn't go so well. Uh, fortunately, I save him between videos. Which does put us back here. You have to be a bit lucky there. If you're really close to it when it falls, then... Um, yeah, we've already seen you. Uh, then you... Uh, can't really get away. Like what just happened to me. Got some piece of the plan again. You do not want to do this while uh, the spider is on your tail. Because it won't stop to wait for you. Does anybody else have flashbacks of Dreamfall, by the way, with that spider? It usually drops on this screen. No, not this time, I guess. Hey! Okay, it doesn't say anything special, but we appear to be able to get onto the skeleton from here. And this is actually a safe spot. The spider will not be able to uh, get onto this. So you uh, don't have to worry about it. And that's a good thing, because it is now dropping down. Haha, <laughs> you can't get to me. Rats, the eyes on to see if that's a Sarian spider droid. We already read that. And it moves off screen because it cannot detect us while we're up here. Of course, if we go back to the surface, uh, it will come back. Ooh, it's the head of whatever being this was. This must be the skull previously attached to the rest of the mammoth bones partially assembled here. And I do think that it is actually the same creature as the, the smaller one we saw near the pot, because it appears to have more than one eye cavity, and that creature also had more than one eye. It also looks like it's a cave. A section of vertebra, near where the head used to be attached, extends north and south. To the east is an ominous looking skull. By the way, that sandworm thingy, um, Shiolut or whatever, um, you don't really need to worry about it. Only if you go away from the, uh, the skeleton, if you try to move to uh, the north, south, east, west, away from where uh, the skeleton is, will that become a problem. Oh, there's the droid again. The spider is quite relentless in its pursuit of organic beings. Your quandary is that, to the best of your knowledge, you are the only one in the area fitting that description. Yes, but it can't get to me here, so who cares? This appears to be the thoracic area of the spinal column of this meatless beast. Other than an obviously defective vertebra, you've got more sand and crud. What started out at one time as mere hairline fractures are now cl clearly cracks in the imperfect vertebral, vertebral module. Okay, hard word to say. Does the spider droid have a smell? You're not close enough to give it, a, give it a good whiff, if that's what you'd really like to do. If you've got a taste for chrome, step on up and give it a try. No, because then it'll blow up. Now, this thing looks a bit unstable. And indeed it is. I'd say that the widening of those cracks is an excellent indication that this thing is not a truly stable unit. And don't you hate the way it makes your brain bounce around like a handball in all that spare cranial space? Hey, are you implying I'm stupid? Again? Um... If you walk over this too often, it will, in fact, collapse. And, um... At least, unlike King's Quest 2, it actually is pretty obvious that that will happen. And it's one of the ways you can get rid of the spider droid. If the spider droid is under here, like it just was, and you walk over this thing, and it falls down... ...it will, um, die. 
It is, however, not the way I'm gonna use. Also, you don't want to do it now, because you have to, um, walk over here more than once. So if you drop the vertebra right now, you'll be stuck. I'll just keep, uh, going along this, uh, skeleton. This is the north-central boundary of a massive skeletal structure surrounded by arid terra not so firma. Um, can't say anything. Hmm. Apparently there's nothing to be said about this hole. <laughs> I like he's following us around. Even though he can't possibly, um, get at us. What's it? What's this? It looks interesting, although hard to tell from where you're standing. It may be a sign. If you got closer, maybe you could read it. Can we smell it? That's much more logical than reading it. Oh, what the hell? It's a trap door. Hey, what's the deal here? That elevator doesn't lower, it sucks! Literally, in more than one way. Looks like we're in some kind of cave. But we'll have to continue in the next video. Welcome back. We, um, went down this, um, uh, well, I hesitate to call it an elevator, it's more like a hole in the ground, and came out in this cave. This looks like your standard run-of-the-mill pneumatic transport. This particular model only descends, however, and it's not a pleasant ride. This is one end of what appears to be a large cavern. The only way to go is to the left. This stalagmite has obviously been broken loose previously and set back in place. The being responsible, most likely your Coronian counterpart, Try to fool everyone else by using some sticky gunk to hold it together. Like that would actually fool anyone. The stalagmite itself has no smell. However, something adhering to the stalagmite does seem to generate a maggot gagging aroma. Skillfully maneuvering your tongue along the stalagmite removes the surface coating of grit and, in turn, transforms your taste buds into the organic equivalent of double odd sandpaper. You almost wish you had a table or breadboard to sand. Let's see if we can get that piece of stalactite. You flex those incredible muscles you wish you had, but you're barely able to snap loose the previously fractured stalactite tip. Looks like they used part of the plant. Having an adequate personal collection of natural coronian adhesive, you choose to leave this sticky, sticky gunk where it is. Yes, we already have some. Not actually sure if you can pick it up here if you don't. It would be nice if you could, because we're gonna need it. This is the lower pathway. This is the upper pathway. Gee, why does that not surprise me? This is another large chamber in the underground complex. Paths run along the top and bottom edges. The grate is made of metal and seems to be fastened securely to the floor. It is too dark to see down through the grate. However, an odd smell emanates from the depths of the pit. Really? It smells great. Hands up anyone who didn't see that pun coming. Nobody? Gee, I thought so. It doesn't taste great, however. Oh well. Let's see. Ooh! Ah! Help! It's a great monster. I bet he's lonely and just wants to be your friend. I bet he's gonna eat me. No, it still smells great. I was hoping the monster would have a different smell, but it doesn't. Well, we need to get some, uh, find some way to uh, keep those tentacles otherwise occupied while we slip by. And the way to do that is to use the uh, sticky plant. There we go.
It's a great monster. At the moment, he's stuck on something. Fortunately, not you. Which allows us to move on to the next chamber. This is a pulsating steam geyser. It's an odd closed door with no apparent mechanism for opening it. Some stuff behind the door, but we'll look at that once we actually get through it. You're unable to open the door by hand. Um, let's just save here. I wouldn't be touching that directly, it's hot. Can we smell it? You get a whiff of sulfur in the steam-heated air. Yes, a good steam cleaning might seem in order right now, considering all the things you've dragged it over lately. It's the facial peel that is of concern. Quite. Well, um... There isn't any mechanism for opening the door, but... Uh, that steam vent may have something to do with it, and this stalagmite piece we broke off seems like it would be a great fit for that steam vent, so let's try that. And it worked! Hmm. You gaze intently at the greenish pool of liquid, the first real sign of moisture on the planet. The pool seems to have no bottom. The gentle dripping has a soothing effect on your frazzled nerves. A small plume of mist rises as each drop hits the pool's surface. And... This is, uh... Something you do not want to, uh, mess with. Let's try, uh, touching it. <laughs> I like that. Well, Scott, it looks like uh, Verger has done it again. It sure does, Mark. Let's run that again with the aid of our new How He Blew It cam and chalkboard. I have to say that carefully, Mark. Every time we mention something with a trademark or copyright, the lawyers uh, start do something. Stupid fast tech boxes. Instant replay! Now, this is where Roger makes the fatal move. And we can all see the result of that mistake. I don't know about you, Scott. Personally, I'd like to know exactly what I'm messing with before I actually mess with it. I guess he'll know better next time. Ouch. I love the music for that, by the way. One of the most funny death scenes in any Space Quest game. Sure, you've died a few deaths before, but this one really burns you. Planets are depending on you. Seeing you do stuff like this is definitely making them nervous. Definitely, yeah. Um, also, I'd like to point out that I have no idea what the two guys from Andromeda actually sound like, um, because um, despite appearances, they are actually the designers of the game. Uh, Scott Murphy and Mark Crow, just because uh, they originally posed for the box of Space Quest wearing uh, fake pig noses and some weird hairdos and sunglasses. So they would look aliens and they called themselves the two guys from Andromeda. I don't know what they sound like, so if my impression is um, not spot on, then, uh, well, I apologize. Well, touching it wasn't a great idea. How about smelling it? You lean over the pool to get a good solid whiff and... Whoa! Talk about clean sinuses! Oops. That's right, you have no head. That darn pool must be filled with acid. You obviously can't go on living that way. Why are acids always this aggressive in, uh, in fiction? In real life, you, would never, you wouldn't uh, die just from sniffing an acid. Um, no. Let's lick it. Drink it, or whatever. You lean over to drink from the tempting pool of liquid. 
As your lips touch the fluid, you feel a pain which could be likened to kissing a lit rocket nozzle. Now you know what they mean when they say, don't drink the water. Or the acid, in this case. Yes, it's the same death sequence. That's right, you have no head. We already read that message. Okay, let's try not messing with the pool of uh, water, or acid, or whatever it is. Let's see what dangers await us on this side. You're in the leftmost room of this cavern. Standing sentinel at the juncture of the lower and upper pathways are two odd-looking units, obviously placed here there on purpose. Something is being emitted by the devices. I wonder what's behind this, because it really looks like uh, somebody didn't want people to just go through this uh, cave unhindered. So there must be something important at the other end. Hopefully people who can help us get out of here. So we can at least tell people about the Syrians, or maybe even try and stop them themselves, uh, ourselves. The beams seem to form some form of electronic barrier across the path. Hmm. Something tells me um, that's a dangerous thing. It's a good way to get a nose job. To get that nose job you've often considered. You're quite attached to your tongue and would like to keep it that way. I don't understand why here it doesn't let us do the obviously stupid thing. But in uh, the acid pool it does. I'm going to save again. And I'm sure that these things are completely harmless, so let's just uh, walk through them. Oops! Well, Scott, it looks like Roger has done it yet another time. It sure seems that way. For those who might have missed that last move by Roger, or if, like me, you just want to see another, get another look at it, let's roll it again. Instant replay! Play, play, play. You've got to give some high marks for truly fine execution. We'll have to give it a strong 9.8. You find quite a number of forms to transform yourself into. This is the first time you've been wafer style. Yes, um, these are actually the only two deaths in the entire game that have this um, uh, Scott and Mark comment on its structure. And I wanted to show them because they are my favorite deaths of the game. I'm not going to show each and every death. There are already videos on YouTube showing every possible death in the Space Quest games and most other Sierra games. I'll still do the really amusing ones, like the, the don't press this button one and these ones, but uh, not all of them. Alright, we'll continue in the next video. Welcome back. Well, we found out uh, the hard way that walking through these laser beams isn't the, uh, the best thing to do, so we'll have to find a way to uh, disable them. Well, you know how to do that. It always is the same thing in games. We have a mirror, so let's use it. Have you have to see any laser beams in games that use different ways of disabling them. You have quite cleverly turned the beam upon itself, frying and fusing it into a state of inoperability. Which is a good thing. So we go on to the upper path, and here we see drops of that same green liquid. Something tells me walking into them would be a bad idea. This is an upper pathway in a slightly smaller chamber of the underground complex. Near the middle section of the path, the acid drops have formed a pattern of little holes. No, it's not a dot-to-dot -dot puzzle. Can we smell the drops? Well, just in case that kills us, let's just save. No, they don't have any uh, smell. We need to walk past these without getting killed. It's not actually that difficult. 
There we go. And here we are near the end of the cave. The upper pathway. Um, nothing new to look at here. And I'm gonna save here again. Even though this won't kill us, I'll save some time by saving here. Let's go up here. As soon as you enter the room, you find yourself surrounded by darkness. Suddenly, you'll become aware of the fact that you cannot move or speak. A strange unknown force has taken over. A massive holographic image appears before you. Ooh. Scary looking fellow. It begins to speak. Shijojup! That's what he's saying. Or shouldn't my fish? First, the rest of the world. This is air. There are all sorts of fruitless airmen just looking at him. Or something. As an apparent result of your inability to understand the alien tongue, the being has sent you back to the surface. You need some kind of help with that. And we're back at the top. Now you can actually just walk around and try that again. Uh, oh, no, not safe. Restore! Uh, you do get enough passes over the instable vertebra to do that. Uh, but we'll save some time and just restore. All we need to do here is use this gadget, which, like I said before, looks like a babelfish, which means it is a translator gadget. You switch the gadget on, and it makes it sound like a communicator on uh, Star Trek. And now we should be able to understand the strange alien creature. And we've already seen this text, it's still the same. It begins to speak. So, you found your way into my hallowed chamber. Fortunately, there is much more to me, I. I wouldn't count on it. I've been monitoring your travels on our planet. It appears that you are up to pervertible estuary without a means of locomotion. In other words, you're on the letter express, slapping the dogs, pounding the sand. You'd kill for a fine ride. You're obviously in need of transportation. Quite so. Let us see if you are worthy of our assistance. On the surface lives a beast called Orat. He proves to be a bit of an annoyance on occasion. Dispose of him and bring back evidence of your conquest. Only then will I deal with your plight. Good luck, strange one. Bring me evidence bring to me evidence of the beast or its demise, and we'll talk. With that, you find yourself transported back to the surface. Right, so we'll have to find and get rid of this Orat creature. Uh, unfortunately, I know where he is. Uh, unfortunately, there's still a spider droid running around. So we'll have to be careful. Uh oh, there he comes. That's actually not such a bad thing, assuming he doesn't catch up with me first. Because this is where Orad is, and there's two ways to kill him, and one way is to make use of... the... You have trouble moving your own carcass around. Surely you sure can't move something that weighs several times more than you. Besides, you left your trust back on the Arcada. I'm trying to hide... Oh. Damn it. It's too late! And that probably means I'm gonna walk right into the droid. No. No, oh, the droid went away. Um, actually... I'm gonna save here again. Uh, this is also a funny death. 
There's two ways to get rid of him. Um, one is using the spider droid, which is what I'm going to do, which I was planning to do, but I wasn't quick enough. Uh, let's just look at him. Or it is huge and ugly. Of course, what your, your opinion may differ depending on what part of the universe you come from. You also get the impression that he might be quite mean. Hi there. Though normally known for his intellectually stimulating conversation in the monster and beast community, Orad seems limited to grunts in the way of response to your probing questions. A pile of skulls here, sucked clean by Orat, was a result of them writing too many adventure games. Or was a result of them writing too many adventure games. I'm guessing the latter. I'm sure he's harmless. Oh no! Oi noi! If you're Australian. They turned you into a basketball. Or it has transformed you into a new piece of recreational equipment. Along with finding this treatment extremely rude, you don't survive it. It's tough to make friends around here. Relax, stretch out, restore, and let's get back to it. There's adventuring to be done. Good, yes. Well, there's two ways of getting rid of him. One way is to throw the um, dehydrated water at him. Which, by the way, we haven't used yet. Um, to drink from. Uh, sometimes you get messages that you're thirsty and you'll have to drink from that. Uh, but you can also use it to get rid of Orat. If you throw it at him, he'll swallow it, rupture the container, and then blow up. But it's much more fun to kill two birds uh, with one stone and use a spider droid. But we'll have to catch his attention again. There he is. Good. What you need to do, with the spider droid following you, go inside and hide. You shiver at the sight of the spider droid entering the cave on its spindly legs. The cold metallic body searches for something to get up close and personal with. This could be interesting. Boom! Haha! -ha! Now that was cool. That killed two problems with no stones. And looks like he left something behind. This gleaming chunk of Ord's anatomy is the only visible proof that Ord ever existed. After that explosion, it's amazing there's that much left. Well, that might be the proof that um, the holographic head wants, so let's take that with us. You reach down and take the Orat pad in your hand part in your hand. Some of it oozes to fill the space between your fingers. Ew. <laughs> this cute little item is an Orat part. You're not sure what part though. I'm not, I'm not sure I care either. Well, that cures all of our problems. We have no more spider droid to worry about, no more Orat to worry about. All we need to worry about is dehydration. Which, uh, to make sure we don't get um, caught unawares by that, let's just take a drink. Hmm, that dehydrated water really hit the spot. That should keep you going a bit longer. Sometimes, like I said, you'll get messages saying, "Hey, you need—you're uh, getting thirsty, and you'd better drink something, or you will die." Of course, you'll die. It's a Sierra game. Everything kills you. Which means that now we don't need um, to squash the spider using this uh, unstable piece of bone. No doubt about it. There's going to be an accident of one kind or another in this shaky piece of calcium-rich uh, matter. Or on this shaky piece of calcium-rich matter, either, even. Well, let's head back to uh, the cave to hand over the evidence. But we'll do that in the next video. Welcome back. We've killed Orat and are on our way to deliver the evidence to the big blue head. 
Unfortunately, that means we have to go down this elevator again. Which is not a very nice experience. As you may have noticed. I'll bet you're truly getting to hate this elevator. Quite. Fortunately, we don't really need to worry about any of the obstacles anymore. We do need to worry about me not clicking near enough to the edge of the screen so we don't actually go anywhere. This guy is still stuck! He still has eyes. He can still look around, but he can't catch us anymore. Of course, the acid pool never was an obstacle, unless you were stupid enough to uh, touch it, or smell it, or taste it, like I was. Laser fence, nobody has come by to repair it in the meantime. I bet it belongs to whoever that uh, big head was. So we'd better not tell him that we disabled all of his security stuff, because I'm guessing that's what it is. It, it is. Well, at least there's still the acid drops. Of course, I can still die by those. So, I'm gonna save. I'm <laughs> I completely forgotten about that uh, little bit of digital speech there. You are unpleasantly surprised by a drop of searing acid which bores its way to your feet. Only his head is still left. Now, that's some seriously deep pain. Okay. Oh, good thing I saved. Note to self, don't walk forward while the drop is right in front of you. There we go. That wasn't so bad. I only died once. If only we had save and restore in real life would make things so much easier. Again, the massive holographic image appears before you. So, you have returned. Do you have proof of the destruction of Orat? If so, drop it before me. Well, we do, in fact, have proof. Here it is. Icky and all. You drop the Orat part to the ground. The vision is silent as the dainty morsel splats to dry soil. You are startled by a rumbling. Suddenly, an oddly shaped door comes into view and slowly opens. You hear a voice, different this time, beckoning you to step forward. So I guess that means we can move now. Where does this lead us? Interesting looking chamber. When you step through, the door slides closed with a faint hissing sound. You are alone in a large room full of strange equipment. Indeed. Got a steam, a steam machine here by the looks of it. And a floating blue alien with four arms. Please don't be alarmed. We intend no harm. We are a peaceful race. We are cautious, however. Others don't share our way of life. Welcome to Corona. Well, yeah, thank you. You are standing in the power generation facility of our underground settlement. All power here is produced by steam. That is unimportant to you, however. We have promised you transportation. Indeed you have. You better live up to that promise. It is a skimmer. It hovers approximately one half meter above the traveling surface. This is very important because of Grell. Grell and his like dwell in caves below the Send. If you stand on the surface too long, you chance becoming a rare moist meal for him. I guess that's the sandworm we saw then. The skimmer is programmed to take you to the settlement on the other side of Corona called Euland's Flats. You can make further travel arrangements there. 
I am sorry, this is all we can offer. I hope your trip is a safe one. Board the skimmer when you are ready to depart. Good luck, strange one. Hey, who are you calling strange? You're the strange one. Ah, I can't look at him. Damn it. I can look at the steam generator, though. The steam generator is a fascinating device in constant motion. It looks like it was assembled following a field trip to the junkyard, but everything appears to be in working order. Oh, well, that's good. I do believe the ste uh, steam machine has a smell. You get scents of iron oxide, burning rubber, and fusel oil. It makes you momentarily homesick for mom's cooking. Man, uh, his mother must have sucked at cooking. This thing looks hot enough to fry your tongue like an egg. Okay, better not try that then. The large metal cylinders form supports for the upper level. This place is most interesting indeed. A mixture of both old and new technologies makes you wonder about its origin. Or at least about its tech support. On one side of the chamber is a primitive steam generator. Its pistons, pounding rhythmically, turn steam into useful energy. On the other side is what appears to be a computer console. Does the place generally have a smell? No? Do the columns have a smell? Yes! You suspect that they smell like rusty metal, since that's what they are made of. Lacking the cylinder seems like a waste of time and tongue power. Well, that's never stopped us before. And we got this sweet skimmer! As described, it is a sand skimmer, and it looks like it has skimmed quite a bit of sand in its time. On it is a panel which has a small readout, currently dark, and a keyhole with a key in it. What appears to be skylights made from gigantic oysters fill the intense coronian sunlight... filter the intense coronian sunlight down to these lower levels. Oh, that's clever. These pipes are probably part of a larger network that carries steam to power ver various coronian devices. These gauges appear to monitor the pressure in the pipes. You think about the thousands of pounds of boiling hot steam in the system, and hope the gauges work. Everything here has a description. These people of Corona sure are an odd-looking lot. You can't pin it down, but you're sure something is different about them. Roger being as observant as ever. The underarm odor potential of this Coronian is truly staggering. Too bad this place has never heard of deodorant. So they're not like those people in uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide that invented deodorant before they invented anything else. The gauge doesn't smell like anything in particular. Oh, I nice of you to tell me that. Try as you might, you can't smell the skylights from down here. Just as you are about to pass out from hyperventilation, you sensibly decide to abandon this particular project. You note with a satisfaction that the skimmer smells exactly like you expected it to. But what did we expect it to smell like? Although the skylights look like gigantic oysters, I doubt very much if they would taste anything like them. Don't put your mouth on that, you don't know where it's been. Raw skimmer is not one of your favorite dishes. How about computer? This tastes really dull. You decide you'd rather have a cheeseburger, and you wonder, do they have a monolith burger somewhere in this neighborhood? That's a reference to Space Coast 3, where monolith burger first shows up. Of course, they can reference that because the remake was made after Space Coast 3. Does the computer smell like anything? The computer doesn't smell very interesting. Well, it also didn't taste very interesting, so that works out nicely then. The thought of your tongue stuck sizzling to the hot steam pipe is not a pleasant one. But it would be hilarious. All pipes wrapped in duct tape smell alike to you. I guess so. Well, before um, we get out of here with the uh, skimmer, there is something you can do here. It has to do with this uh, computer monitor. There's nothing visible on the computer screen. You might need to insert a data cartridge for this thing to work. Well, it just so happens that we do have a data cartridge. This is actually one of two places in the game where you can uh, read the data cartridge. Yes, the game is actually nice enough to provide you with two places. 
uh, which is sort of uncharacteristic for Sierra, but anyway. So we're uh, gonna read this uh, cartridge in the next video. Welcome back! We've got our way out of here, but first we want to use this computer monitor to read what's on our mysterious data cartridge. Let's see uh, what uh, information about Van Allen belts is on there. Or something else, maybe. Why the scientists thought it was important. I do remind you, however, that the manual states there is a one buckazoid per day fee for overdue cartridges. But since the Arcada blew up, I'm guessing we won't have to pay that. Well, let's see what uh, we've got here. Loading. Whoever shall read this. My name is Dr. Slash Vohol. I am a scientist with the Star Generator Project aboard the Starlab Arcada. We have just successfully completed development and testing of the Star Generator. During this time I have come to believe that our progress has been monitored by others. I fear that the Sarians may have learned of our mission. If my fears prove true, the Star Generator and the people of our universe are in serious jeopardy. And his fears have proven true, so he was right. The Star Generator is a miraculous device. Used as intended, it will help preserve life for eons to come. Used as a device for evil, it would cause the destruction of millions of lives and enslave all who oppose the Syrians. And that would not be a good thing, I bet. Encoded within this cartridge are all the plans and specifications for the construction of the Star Generator. So we can make a backup if we uh, blow this one up. Make a new one. Should any disaster befall the Star Generator project, scientists would be able to create a duplicate of the Star Generator with this information. I'm impressed, they actually have good uh, backup uh, practices. Please guard it with your life and return it to the Xenian ruling body as quickly as possible. Well, they sure knew how to pick someone to entrust that to. Important note, the Star Generator is capable of self-destruction. This was introduced to the system as a precaution. To activate it, one must enter the code 5454. Now, I'm betting we're gonna need that. So I better make a note of that, and I do think it is random. A five-minute time will begin to count down. Beware, anyone within five kilometers of the Star Generator will be in danger once the timer has been initiated. Please be careful, and... Good luck. Interesting. That was no information on Van Ellen belts after all. It was um, important stuff. Now, one uh, thing you can do here is forget the data cartridge, which does not lead you to uh, a nice ending. So let's take it with us. Because if you forget it, you can't get back here, so you have to load some time before this point and redo the entire rest of the game. Now I'm gonna save here as um, Skimmer, because when I get into this Skimmer, it uh, initiates a arcade sequence, and I can choose to either do that or skip that. I'm gonna try and do it. Um, Oh, we didn't get the funny reverse scene. Anyway, uh, sometimes he puts the gear into reverse and then crashes backwards and then goes out properly. This section is an arcade sequence. Would you like to play or skip this sequence? Well, I'm gonna try it once and when I inevitably die, um, I'll uh, reload and skip. The controls of this are a little bit tricky, you can actually use the mouse or the keyboard. The keyboard is a little bit easier, at least I think so. You can hit the small rocks three times, the big ones, they uh, kill you instantly. Actually, not doing too bad, despite that initial uh, screw up. Of course, now that I've said that, 
I will immediately die, probably. Oh, there comes Corona of uh, Yulin's Flats, our destination. Ah, oh, damn it! Late warning. The big rock cuts you no slack. Gee, thanks! Fortunately, I already knew that. Okay, well, we'll uh, just skip the arcade sequence because it's just more of the same until you actually reach uh, Yulin's Flats. And you don't actually lose points for not doing it. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Oops, had the dar darn thing in reverse. I hope nobody saw that. Well, at least we got to see that, thanks to my screw up there. Skip it! Still get to watch it. Although it goes a lot quicker than uh, if you didn't. I do like the music. Very uh, catchy tune. Okay. I'll stop doing that now. If only this thing would float a little bit higher over the ground, then those rocks wouldn't even be a problem. Maybe you could try playing the, ar playing the arcade sequence next time. Well, I tried it last time and I died. Okay. There we are, Yulin's Flats. You'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. After a truly stone-crushing journey, you have miraculously arrived safely in Yulin's Flats. And just in time, too, because the skimmer's power cell has been drained. It will take some time to recharge itself. In other words, we aren't going anywhere with that thing. This place isn't quite what you had expected. It is semi-bleak at best. I guess that means we had expected it to be uh, bleaker than this. An odd-looking fellow is lounging against the wall of a nearby building, watching you with a great deal of interest. He looks, uh, sort of untrustworthy. Seems to be interested in the skimmer. Say, pal, I couldn't help but noticing your skimmer. It's a genuine 86 Play Ads GL. I've been looking everywhere for one of these babies. How'd you like to unload it for the unheard of prize of 25 buckazoids? Now, this is one of the um, most screwy parts of this game, is that if you if you take this deal, you'll get stuck later. And you won't have any idea what you did wrong once you get there. So, no way. Fine. Be that way. Because he'll come back with a better offer. Um, not only will he give more money, um, but he'll also offer something else. Oh, and... You'd better take the keys. You remove the skimmer's key from its dashboard. Because if you don't, this thing will get stolen. All right, let's uh, take a look around at this new location. Yulin's Flats is a typical example of some of the frontier settlements that sprang up in the early days of outer zone exploration. Unfortunately, this attracted many unsavory quick buckazoid types. Caution is advised. Hence uh, why we need to take the keys, I guess. The sign is very unusual. It looks as though the whole building has been constructed around the wreckage of a crashed spaceship. Or maybe the traffic around here is just really awful. Either is possible, I guess. There is a rounded structure here with a door on one side. It is typical of some of the prefab structures constructed in some frontier areas re years ago. Oh, that gives the same message. I thought it might give something about this round green thing. Hey, I recognize that shuttle back there! 
This appears to be a long-range shuttle, perhaps from a large starship. It looks vaguely familiar somehow. Hey, he's coming back. Okay, buddy, you drive a hard bargain. This is my final offer, and I'm only making it because I can see you need it pretty bad. Okay, what is it? I'll make it 30 buckazoids, and I'll throw in this swell jetpack. It was previously owned by a little old Fark, who only flew it back and forth to Fleabot on, on a Sunday. It works great in zero gravity. You'll love it. Fleabot is another reference to Space Crush 3. Do we have a deal, or don't we? It's a deal. Great. You see, you need that jetpack later on, and if you took his first offers offer, then you'll be st stick l uh, stuck later. Glad we could do business. I'll just take that key, thank you kindly. In addition, I'd like you to have these coupons, good for discounts and free merchandise from some of our local merchants. As a representative of the Ulan's Flats Chamber of Commerce, I hope you enjoy your visit to our friendly little community. Later, you'll need a jetpack, and if you don't uh, have it, then uh, you will have no idea where you could have gotten it if you didn't take this offer. Of course, it's pretty much standard practice to try and uh, haggle this kind of deal in this kind of game, see if there's anything better you can get for it. But still, it is a pretty uh, dirty trick. Anyway, we'll uh, continue looking around uh, this interesting place in the next video. Welcome back! We just traded in our uh, skimmer for a jetpack, some money and some coupons. This is a used jetpack. Real used. Wait a second. How the hell did he just drive off with our skimmer? Weren't its power cells dead? Oh, anyway. And we got uh, 33 buckazoids now. And, hey kids! This bar coupon is good for 5 buckazoids. Bukazoids. And a free Caronian ale! This coupon gives you a 20% discount at a droid's bias near you. How helpful! Those suckers have the highest droid prices in this universe. Well, uh, we might uh, be able to use that. Although you can actually get by without them as well. Let's look at some of the ships around here. We already spotted an Enterprise shuttle. This ship is a real classic. A Wallwood Warp Blaster ZX with the original paint job. You've only seen those on all, the f on all postcards. This one's a genuine antique from the 24th and a half century. Yeah, don't try and figure out when this game is taking place, um, because they constantly change it. So, uh, at some point in Space Coast 6, I think they make reference to the year 6000. They're probably just different calendar systems from different uh, species or something. I don't know. What the hell is this thing? The settlement of Euless Flats is surrounded by these force field generators. They repel such undesirables such as the Grell, which thrive below the sands. It will only allow airborne vehicles in or out. Well, something tells me we can have uh, some fun with that. Can we smell it, actually? No! Ah, uh, out the ships. You're a nosy little beggar, aren't you? Quite. It mainly smells like the dust that's been accumulating on it for the past 50 years. Smelling this ship seems like a giant waste of time. Didn't your mother tell you not to go licking other people's spaceships? No, not really. What a revolting idea. There's not much point in licking the ship. It's already quite clean. Oh well, too bad. Let's just try walking into the force field. Zap! Ouch, that hurt. You are standing next to the protective barrier and circling Yulin's flats. Due to the fact that you are land-based, you are not able to pass. I take issue with that. Oops! 
Yikes, it looks like you hit that force field one too many times. Not only did it burn every follicle of hair from your sleek frame, but your aorta, if you could see it, now resembles the end of a red celery stalk. Stalk. That uh, sounds painful. Oh well. Does the bar smell like something? You detect the scent of neon and zapped bugs. The bar doesn't smell. There's the sign. That doesn't seem either intelligent or advertising. Oh well, um, let's uh, head into the bar. I guess after our recent adventure we could use a uh, refreshment. There we are, the bar. And look, it's ZZ Top! playing uh, the song I used for the intro as well. Only the version I used in the intro was played with real uh, instruments rather than this uh, MIDI version. On stage are two heavily bearded gents and a relatively clean-shaven drummer. They're one of the hottest bands in the quadrant. This is a seedy little place. Galactic Riff Rav are seated at the bar. A bearded band is cranking out some of the more popular tunes in the quadrant. There is a slot machine standing near the bar. You notice a sweeper in the corner of the room. It must get messy in here. No one seems to notice or care that you have entered the bar. I don't see this uh, sweeper that uh, he's talking about. Some strange blue dude currently monopolizes the slots o death machine. Slots o death? Now that sounds inviting. It appears to be an electronic slot machine. This character kind of reminds you of a cute fluffy little kitten you had when you were a kid, except that he weighs about 400 kilos and has a foot long and has foot long razor sharp claws and a bad attitude. Which means he's either kill Rafi or a cousin from Larry Niven's uh, known universe series. Cute little purple guys, eh? They sure can put away the brew. This character looks like an economy-sized version of your Uncle Buck's toupee. Of a uh, toupee, sorry. You must be getting dizzy. You're seeing triple. It's the triple-breasted whore of Eroticon 6. This guy appears to have blown in from Santa Cruz. A fine example of his species, whatever that is. Does anybody here smell? I'm betting they do. I guess having a long beer means not having to take a bath. Really? I wouldn't have thought so. Get real! Sour beer and still sweat is what most every bar uh, smells like. Especially since they banned smoking. Why don't you just buy two or three drinks instead? Seems like a random thing to say, but it is actually a hint, because you do actually need to buy three drinks. Could be rid of flea shampoo, or just a really manly aftershave. The thought of your tongue laid out in four neat slices like luncheon meat puts this idea right out of your head. Sniffing others is a ritual best left at dogs and other four-legged creatures. Most extraterrestrials won't do that on the first date. Maybe you should just listen to them. Which is not actually possible, but anyway. Pretty much like wet dog. Better not, you're likely to get a furball. Oh, and that's the same message. She smells as great as she looks, but maybe a little less green. How can you smell green? It ain't easy being green, I can tell you that. Most extraterrestrials, uh, why do they all give the same message? Ha, ah, the heady fragrance of eau de banana slug. You left your slug recipes in your other pair of pants. Plus we're wearing a pressure suit. Sniffing others, okay. 
We're running out of original messages here. His armpits could etch glass. That bad, eh? Try it, and this guy is likely to use his beer tab on your head. Okay, does anybody here have anything to say? He doesn't have the time to talk to you. They don't have the time to talk to you. He does. Hi, the name's Wilco, Roger Wilco. What's yours? I am sometimes called Speaker to Cartoons, and sometimes Flayer of Soft Pink Mammals. Mind if I sit down? <laughs> Roger is not getting the hint. Buzz off, monkey boy! Okay, that didn't go so well. What's the use? You can't understand a word they're saying. How about him? He looks like the alien from Alien, except more hairy. Can I offer you a milk bone? You inquire in an attempt to be friendly. You decide you just can't make friends with everybody. Can we get, go out on a date with the triple best breasted uh, woman? So, you uh, come here often? Oh, come on, Roger, even I've got better pickup lines than that. Get out of my face, Pinky! Gee, brain! North! <coughs> You've decided she's not your type. Heck, she's not even your species. Forget it. This guy's not exactly a sparkling conversation list. Well, neither are we, so that's a perfect fit, I would have thought. Oh well, nobody here wants to talk to us, so let's just uh, get a drink. And we have actually a um, coupon, it's not really required you use it, which gives us five buckazoids and a Coronian Ale. Oh, we never uh, give up free drinks or uh, free money, especially because I'm Dutch. We love free stuff. I would like to uh, redeem this coupon for five buckazoids and a free beer. I think these are Roger's first line in the entire game, in this uh, first lines, uh, the stuff he says in this room. He hasn't said anything yet in the entire game. Hold on, Mac, I'll get to you when I can. Here's your five buckazoids and your free beer. He uh, looks friendly. Hmm, it tastes better than it smells. Thank goodness. Another one would be nice. Indeed it would, but we'll have to uh, lessen our first in the next video. Welcome back, and somehow I just missed this guy getting shot. I guess slot so deaf is um, rather literal. Oh well. That means we'd better be careful if we want to play around with that thing. It would, however, be nice to uh, get another beer. This time we need to pay for it, though. Yo, how about a refill? Hold on, Mac, I'll get you when I can. So, what's your beef, Junior? Want another drink? Yes, we do. Here you go. So like I said before, it was actually a hint that you need to uh, drink free drinks. Ah yes, that hits the spot. Just one more should do it. Yo, how about a refill? I'm busy, wait your turn. You don't look busy to me. So, what's your beef, Junior? Want another drink? Sure. There you go. As you sip another of the odd brews, you overhear someone at the bar speaking. There I was, cruising for sector EG when I spot this blip on the scanner. We need to make a note of this, sector EG. So, I had to ward it, you see, and, and right there in front of me sits a Deltor. It's just sitting there. My heart starts hyperwarping on me. I figure my milliseconds are numbered. All I can think of doing is getting my craft out of there. So I'm reaching for the throttle. All of a sudden, there's this incredible flash of light. You see, and just like that, this little planetoid explodes into a ball of fire. I tell you, I've never seen anything like it. 
I mauled the throttle and, and got out of there quick, you bet! Uh oh, sounds like the Sarians are using the star generator. It's the Deltor, the ship that attacked us, in case you didn't know. Um, so now we know where it is, it's in Sector EG. Which we're gonna need uh, later. After we get away to get off of this heap of rock. Well, that's uh, all we can do uh, here. Now we're gonna need some more money. At the moment we have um, 34 Bacazoids. That's um, the 33 we had before, plus 5, uh, minus 4 for the two extra drinks we bought. But we're gonna need to buy a droid and a ship, actually, so um, we're gonna need a lot more money. And the way to do that is to use the slots o death machine. However, that is something that can uh, end badly. Um, slots o death. Because if you get three skulls, you die. Well, let's uh, try our luck, shall we? I'm just gonna let three. Makes things go a little bit quicker. Uh-oh. Phew. We didn't win anything. We didn't die either. Nothing again. Uh oh. Uh oh. More uh oh. You lose, homeboy. Zap. Well, at the very least, I would guess that this would stop people from gambling. No, because they're dead. And we get dumped on the back of the uh, bar. Lux Turnus cost you dearly. As your dust particles gradu gradually drift across Corona's barren landscape, you reflect upon the irony of your fate. Many was the time you swept and dumped piles of dust very similar to your current state. Interesting how Roger is still able to uh, reflect on stuff despite being turned to dust. Well, we need a way to cheat this thing, and we can do that using this uh, magnetic thingamajig we got off the star generator pedestal in the Arcada. Not entirely sure if it is if it is even possible to um, just use the save and load method to beat this thing, or if you never win anything at all. In, I think in the original uh, version of the game, you actually had to uh, use save and load because there was no magnetic thingamajig. So let's just bet three, and the this thing will make sure that we won't die, but it will also make sure that we will also get uh, always get money, varying amounts. Now we won fifteen. That's actually the uh, lowest possible amount in a combination of three the same. The best is three um, of the ships, uh, which is what we're going to get now. And that gets you 60 Bacazoids. We need to keep going um, until we can't keep going any longer, which will make itself pretty obvious. I think it's something like 300 Bacazoids that you have to get well, if we keep getting the ships, that's not going to take very long. I think these are 30 Bacazoids. Yep. There's definitely no sense in betting less than 3, because you know you're always going to... ...win something... ...that increases your winnings. So we're going to get 30 again.
guess this is a little bit nicer uh, in this version. At least you don't have to uh, try your luck and hope you get money and then restore if you don't. And much like the poker game in uh, Police Quest, only less fun. But with this cheating thingy, we can just breeze on through. It's sort of pointless that they still make you do it, I mean... At this point, there's not really any uh, anything you can af uh, affect here. There's uh, no influence you have on the outcome. You just need to keep doing it until you have enough money. Come on, give me some ships. It goes a little bit quicker then. Okay, all well, galaxies will do. 277, I think we're pretty close to our goal. Ah, uh, that should do it, I think, if I remember the 300 bucks I was right. Ah, there we go. You step back nervously as the overheated slot machine begins to sputter and smoke. Oops. Wow, I guess you overheated the poor thing. Well, slots of death, this time you die. Haha, or do you think of that, eh? Alright, well that's all we can do uh, here in the bar. Now we've got uh, the money we'll need for the remainder of our uh, exploits here. 334 Bakazoids. Um, I'm actually gonna go out of the bar and back in, because you can get different music uh, options, depending on uh, what the game fancies when you go inside. Let's see if we can get some of the others. So you can hear what those sound like. No. Come on. Work with me here. Ah, there we go. This is supposed to be uh, Madonna. On stage, a strangely attired woman performs her act, if that's what you want to call it. You haven't had a girlfriend for a long time, more like forever, but even that's not enough to make her attractive. Poor Roger is going to wait a have to wait a long time before he actually gets a girlfriend. Space Quest 5! He doesn't have the time to talk to you. You'd love to, but those spikes look deadly. I'm guessing he's talking about her heels or something. Her taste in clothes is almost as bad as her taste in music. Ha ha ha. What a nice pun. There is one more. If memory serves. Let's see if we can get it. Yes, there we go. It's the Blues Brothers, who are also in the original game, I think. And they're, they're blue, get it? Blues Brothers, and they're blue. Oh man, these game designers are so funny. There are a couple of non-galactic looking humanoids cranking out some unfamiliar sounding tunes. They seem solely interested in the music they're performing. Don't you ever wash those suits? They may look like a couple of geeks, but they have good taste in music. Oh well, we'll uh, continue in the uh, next video. We'll see if we can get off this rock. Welcome back! We're still in the bar here, enjoying the music of the Blues Brothers. We have good taste in music. But other than that, we don't have anything else we need to do in here. Everybody needs somebody. Everybody. Okay, anyway. Um, let's uh, head on over to the right here, which is the place where we got dumped after we died. What's this? The back of the bar looks about as dingy as the front did. What? I can't look at the the text? 
I think you could in the original. You can say read sign or something. How the hell is that possible? There's no slots or death machine anymore. Is there something else zapping people? Or do they just d dump their regular garbage here too? Corona has two moons. This one's the smaller of two. Okay. In the distance you see the familiar shape of a droid's Be Us store. Of course, that's a play on uh, Toys R Us. Another lawsuit waiting to happen. Sierra got sued so much over the Space Ghost games. <laughs> Um, let's see. This waste disposal port looks as though it's used quite often. There's a strange pile of very fine white powder here. It has a strange burnt smell to it. Wait, I can tell what it smells like without smelling it? I'm beginning to understand you a little better now. You snort some of the powder and feel a pain like that of a thousand crevel mites feasting on your nasal membranes. You won't want to be doing that again. Did he just imply that I do drugs? It smells like the outside of a building exposed to a filthy atmosphere for a long time. Probably because that's what it is. The force field generators still have no smell. And there it goes again. Yuck! This place could use a good beam cleaning. No way! Can we take some of the ash? Or at the very least rummage through it? Searching through the pile of dust, you find nine buckazoids. We don't really need any more money, but you can find up to a certain amount in here. Two more buckazoids! Yay! You find nothing but ashes, which filter through your fingers and blow away. Alright, um, well, we don't have any business at the droids because I don't see why we would need a droid at this point. What we need is a way to get off this planet, and for that we'll need a spaceship. You'd, you'd think, considering how much this place is like uh, Mos Eisley, that you'd have to go into the bar and talk to someone and arrange a flight on the Millennium Falcon. But no, we have to go here to... Uh, Howdy, bucko! Can I interest you in one of the finest little used spaceships in the galaxy? You look like a man of discerning taste. This one, for instance, just your uh, speed. Uh, style, that is. Yes, we have to go here and buy a spaceship. This is quite a unique little unit. Never been flown over Mach 3. It was owned by a little old lady from Glancidrum. You have to fly it to believe it. And she can be yours for only 99 buckazoids. One time off only. Talk to me, friend. Not entirely clear what he's talking about, uh, but he's actually talking about this, this little ship here. You're standing near one of Tiny's used spacecraft. Upon close inspection, they appear to have quite a few kilo light years on them. So, so how about it, partner? Can I interest you in anything here? Can we do business or what? I'm at your service. Talk to me, Chief. There's a sign here which indicates that this is Tiny's used spaceship lot. There are some decorative banners which seem to indicate that making a purchase at Tiny is going to be a festive occasion. Who would paint their spaceship pink? Anyway, it looks as if Tiny's using this old beast as a source for parts. It definitely won't fly. And it's the same message we got on the other side. Um, does anything here smell? You can't. It's just like all the other buildings in this place. Rank. Something smells fishy about this sales being. Ha 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 ha. For some reason, this ship smells like freshly dug dirt. Oh, I see what you did there, game. And pretty soon so, uh, so will you, uh, viewers. There's no smelling of the uh, signs, of a tasting of the signs. Sushi, anyone? Nah. Tiny looks like a tough cookie. 
Hey, nothing happens when you click on the pink ship. No wonder it smells like dirt. It also tastes like it. Well, um, this sounds like a nice ship. I think I'll buy it. I tell you, old buddy, nan and nan, buck is always as low as I can go on this baby. You got yourself a deal. I tell you, I think I made a wise decision. She's a beauty. Keys are in her. If you have any problems, don't hesitate to come back and tell us about them. Well, let's uh, take her out for a spin then. Literally. It's been a heck of a pleasure doing business with you. Well, good luck. Come again. You proudly climb into your new youth spaceship. There's definitely something unique about it. Quite so. It sort of looks like it's upside down or something. You turn the key excitedly. Ah! What the hell's happening? This ain't no spaceship. This is a journey to the center of the Earth ship. Threat. Why did Mom and Dad go wrong? You be the judge. I think they went wrong in conceiving him. Well, jeez, guy! It seems to develop a mind of malfunction since we acquired it. We did have a small micrometeor shower the other day. Maybe that was it. Yeah, that was probably it. <laughs> yeah, right. As if you didn't know. Much as I'd like to, I can't refund your money. Company policy. It's out of my hands. However, I can give you 70 bucks of its credits on any other ship in our fine line of used space script. Space uh, space craft, damn it. Look around, see what you like. Well, um, can we take the ladder? There's no need for that. All this cost us uh, 29 buckazoids that we can never get back, but we have enough. It's not a problem. And it's funny. Um, let's see what other ships he has. There's nothing else on this screen, but if we go up here, there will be more. Hey, fella, wait up! As long as you're heading that reaction, why don't you let me show my, you my uh, let me show you my other fine spacecraft? No obligation whatsoever to you, pal. Just trying to be helpful to one need. Sure you are. It's not like you're trying to sell me anything. Okay, well let's see uh, what we have here. Two interesting looking craft. That one looks like a flying saucer. Now just take care of these beauty sport. You see what you like, just give a hoot. I'll send it right over here, no pressure. Absolutely none. How about this one? It's awfully small and also much older than you. Does Tiny have anything to say about it? Um, I'm gonna save as Tiny! Can we do business or what? I'm at your service. I wanna know about this thing. Talk to me, Chief! Don't let appearances fool you. This baby may be a relic, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a classic, but she's as dependable as the day we got her. And I just think, and just think, you'll be the only one in the quadrant with one, I'll guarantee it. She's a beaut, ain't she? This little baby can do a spin around the planet in just under an hour. Look at the lines in that bodywork. They just don't make them like this anymore. You know what I mean? She's a real bargain at 185 buckazoids. Well, that sounds pretty nice. I mean, I trust him implicitly. Of course, minus you the 70 buckazoids credits, that will come to 115 buckazoids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take it. So, how about it, partner? Can I interest you in anything here? I was just doing that. I tell you, I think you made a wise decision. She's a beauty. Her keys are in her. If you have any problems, don't hesitate to come back and tell us about him. I'm sure that won't be necessary. I mean, fool me once, uh, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, right? See, this one uh, flies, no problem. We made a fine... Oh. 
darn the luck. You've crashed into dunes and ended your life. The various inhabitants of the Coronian Desert are now feasting on your remains. Guess that wasn't such a hot purchase. Well, I guess we're gonna have to try and make a, a good purpose. My sole purpose in life is to make you happy, or possibly dead. We're gonna have to try and make a good purchase in the next video. Welcome back! Uh, we're just gonna ignore Tiny. Uh, we're in the market for a used spaceship, and our previous two purchases didn't work out so well, so let's take a look at this uh, ship here. Shut up! Well, there's a man with a good eye! This here's the keenest little scrambler in the hemisphere! Tom for the line, handles like a chum! Perfect for cruising the asteroid fields! I want to cruise an asteroid field, I want to save the universe! Can't you give me a saving the universe discount? And she's got all the thrust a guy could need, I tell ya! She did outright steal at 214 buckzoids! Of course, uh, minus you a 70 buckzoid credit, that will come to uh, 144 buckzoids. Well, um, uh, since that's the only ship he has left that we haven't tried yet, and it's actually not bad looking, it appears to be a Drellian cruiser. They have a reputation for quickness and reliability. You are surprised that someone of Tiny's caliber would be carrying it. Well, it seems that he is carrying it, so um, let's buy it. Seems to be the only uh, possible option here. I tell you, I think you've made a wise decision. She's a beauty. Keys are in her. If you have any problems, don't hesitate to come back and tell us about them. Um, well, that seems uh, to have worked out fine this time. We got points, so that probably means that it's the right choice. So let's take off and go find the Deltor. It's been a heck of a pleasure doing business with you. Oh, uh, by the way, you can need a droid to help you fly that thing. Well, uh, good luck. Come again. Wait, I need a droid? You, you didn't tell me nothing about no droid. Damn you, Tiny. Damn you. Seated in the cruiser, you notice there are no controls within reach. Just a button marked load. Tiny must have been serious when he said you needed, needed a droid to fly this thing. And since you are currently droidless, there seems to be nothing else to do but climb out. Well, I guess we do have a reason to go to this droid be us place. I like the painting on the front of the ship, by the way. Um, let's see here, the bigger barrier. No, we, we can't. We're not even allowed to look at it. This robot is a very old model. Somehow he looks tired and depressed. Hey, I recognize that droid. Just forgotten the name of the TV show he's from. What? Carbon-based life forms can be so trying sometimes. If you haven't purchased a robot, I have nothing for you. Now go away. Um is he the one from Lost in Space, or is that a different one? I might be confusing it. Does he smell like something? It smells like a fine grain of light machine or oil. You're expecting high karate, perhaps? No, not really. Why on Earth, or Corona for that matter, would you want to do that? In the hopes you were giving me a funny ma message, and you did, so that worked out nicely. See, if we can actually find the entrance to this place. Might be a little bit more useful. There we go. This robot is a security droid. He can scan an area in infrared, ultraviolet, and infra ultra charge rooms. Mm hmm. Yeah. Weird looking thing. How about this one? It's a robot that seems to be saying, Buy me. Take me home. The sign over the door says, Droids be us. The sign says, All sales final. In 1,438 languages. Wow, they must use really tiny writing. This is the Droids PS storefront. They sell droids for all purposes. Really? Even sex bots? Ah, 
Nothing here smells. Oh well, let's uh, head in. We have a coupon for uh, Droid Spiels, actually. This coupon gives you a 20% discount at the Droid Spiels near, near you. How helpful! Those suckers have the highest droid prices in the universe. Well, let's see what we can find. Greetings, sir! Allow me to show you our fine line of robots, otherwise known as droids. We have a wide variety of work-saving, life-enhancing, shiny new factory-fresh technological wonders of modern engineering wizardry. Does he now? However, I can see that we would be more uh, interested in our line of economy-priced pri economy used robots, wouldn't we? Please observe our robot preview screen. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, yeah, you can actually talk to him about most of the droids. Uh, well, I'm just going to give him the coupon first, though. Very good, sir. This coupon entitles you to a reduction of 20% in price of any of our fine previously owned droids. Oh, nice. Ah, this model is one of my personal favorites. It was produced exclusively for Droids Bias by a small planet who used to these mechanical warriors to fight their battles. The Death Tech Droid is apparently what it's called. That race killed themselves off, however, and spare parts are nearly impossible to find. Don't bother haggling, this one's worth 55 Bakazoids for the parts alone. That would be uh, 46 Bakazoids with a coupon. This model was originally designed as a family companion on those long space vacations. That's the droid from Lost in Space. However, the manufacturer had to discontinue it due to a psychological disorder. Whenever it gets excited, it waves its arms around wildly and yells, Danger! Danger! Danger, Will Robinson! If you can live with the paranoia though, it makes a great babysitter! And if you've got kids, you'll appreciate its low, low price of 698 bucksoids. 559 with a coupon. Oh, well, we can't afford that. So, uh, and besides, we don't need one. We need a navigator droid. Ah, yes. A truly beautiful piece of machinery. This design rates 5 stars. Although a handsome machine, this robot has a habit of killing people without any real reason. Oh, that's a bit of a drawback. I'd love to sell you one, but uh, every last one I had was snapped up by a movie director from New Japan 4. Sorry. <laughs> the brand name says it all. SUX is a major manufacturer of refrigerators, dishwashers, and someday, even time machines. I think that's a reference to Space Coast 4. Uh, I just happen to have one of these in stock. It's been completely reconditioned since its regrettable accident that took the lives of... Uh, but, of course, you wouldn't want to hear about that. No, of course not. Yes, this dandy compact unit goes for a mere 29 bucketoids. 23 with a coupon. You can't go wrong when it's S-U-X. Well, something tells me with this name, it's not a good idea. We'll uh, wait for the next one. How about this one? These little robots are perfect for gardening chores. And they don't mind at all if they're away on the space missions for centuries. The H-U-1-D. Yes, sir. They may look like Kleenex boxes, but they're built around a long time. And quiet, you bet. I got the impression that I completely changed his accent at some point. We've got a set of three, and you can have them all for just 999 buckazoids. 7.99 with a coupon. Oh, we can't afford that either. Dalek. Um, this model has had a bad rep. Unearned it, unearned it if you ask me. They're just a wee bit too ambitious, is all. And who of us isn't? It's quite an endearing quality, actually. However, we're fresh out of them right now. Nobody seems to survive long enough to trade them in. You silly insect. Daleks aren't robots. Exterminate! These are really some of the most useful all-purpose robots around and extremely good with children. H-I-Y-I-O, or something. Um, 
Of course, they're all hibernation this time of year, the century. I could let you have them for just 875 Bakazoids. 700 with a coupon. Again, way out of our budget. Still not enough, droid. This is one of my better bodyguard models. And it also doubles as a radial arm saw. It has one fault, it was probably a tendency to be overzealous. It's no longer available except for demolition purposes. His memory isn't the best, so I'll let you have him for just 512 Bakazoids. 410 with the coupon. Oh, no. How about this one? These robots have a bad attitude. You've got to keep them in line or they'll walk all over you. Probably not a good idea to let, let Roger have one then. Uh, well, maybe you shouldn't consider buying this particular model. Seems like this guy agrees. That model is ideal for flight systems operations. It will pilot any modern fighter or cruiser. And it is one of the most experienced droids we carry. I ask only 45 Bakazoids for it. 36 for the coupon. I got it from some gambling type who was required to pay up or perish. Well, that's the one we want, but unfortunately it looks like it's got off screen. Well, we haven't talked about this one. Oh. I missed it again. Well, we'll wait until the nav droid comes back up and then pay... Uh, this sills... whatever it is. Grasshopper. I like all the little science fiction references they put in this uh, <laughs> this bit of the game. You may pick up your purchase at our convenient Droids PS pickup area, located just out the door and to your right. Great! And what was this droid from if it's not from Austin Space? I don't remember. Hello, sir. Your new robot will be here in a moment. There it comes. Well, there he is, sir. Programmed to follow you around like a whimpering little puppy dog. How humiliating. Well, uh, we got ourselves a droid, which means we can fly away from here using our uh, ship. But we'll do that in the next video. Welcome back. We got ourselves a navigational droid, which we'll need to um, fly our ship. Your new pilot droid appears to be a bit dinged up, but functional. You hope that he knows more about piloting a spaceship than you do. Well, that's not that difficult, I guess. The average vacuum cleaner knows more about piloting spaceships than Roger does. The droid emits a cheerful chirp, but has nothing further to say right now. Fortunately, you bought it as a pilot, not a conversationalist. There's nothing like the smell of a new used droid. It's like that new car smell, I guess. Like many things in your experience, it looks better than it tastes. And he does have a lot of experience, even just through the course of this game. Well, let's uh, get out of here. It automatically follows us. Can you actually look at this art? No. Does the ship smell like anything? The ship smells a bit like space. It must have been there recently. Hmm. Needs salt. Um... Okay, I was afraid he was stuck there. How can the ship smell like space? Space doesn't really smell like anything. Once you are seated snugly in the ship's compact cockpit, the robot moves into position and you push the load button. It leaves its wheels behind. Which would be really annoying if we want to land somewhere else. Hey, wait a minute! Why do you think you're going with my ship? Uh... We bought it. From... Hey! It's the time pod from Space Quest 4! You'll see once we get to doing that game. 
Well, it seems that Tiny didn't actually own this ship. Oh well. Roger didn't see that, so uh, his conscience is clean. We have achieved escape velocity. It might help if you were to tell me where we are going. Please indicate our destination on the touchpad in front of you. Oh, well, we need to go to sector EG, but unfortunately there are no uh, actual, you know, letters on this keypad. It's a keypad just like the uh, data cartridge retrieval uh, thingy on the Arcada. So again, we need to use the uh, manual to tell us what code belongs to uh, sector EG. <coughs> Sorry. Well, let's look around a little bit here. If there's anything to look at. Which it seems there's not. Then why even give me the option? Please enter a navigational code sequence to allow course plotting. Um, alright, we'll just enter the code for sector EG. Which is this thing. And this thing. And this thing. And finally, it's this symbol. If you put in a wrong code, um, I think it, it'll either just not work, um, or you'll go somewhere and you'll die. Either by crashing into an asteroid or something like that. Hey, wait a second. Did I read that wrong? Oh, yes, I did. I must have switched codes accidentally. If you give the wrong sector, then you'll go somewhere and die. But if you uh, give a code that doesn't exist at all, then it does nothing, as you just noticed. Okay, I'm plotting our course. Course plotted, stand by for warp speed. Engage! Fancy little uh, palette swapping effect there. At least I think that's how they do it. That's usually how they do those kinds of animations. Oh no! It's an asteroid field! And if you encounter any of those at an incorrect sector, you will die! But since this is the right... Uh, sector... We actually managed to get through it safely. Sensors indicate a large ship in this sector. I wonder who it could be. We'll continue to scan for an ID. And the droid scratches its head. Which is a perfectly normal thing for droids to do. And it's the Deltor! We found it! Whoa! That's a Sarian Bell Cruiser! We'd better stand off. If we get any closer, they'll detect us for sure, and we'll be space sputum. Let's head on out of here, okay, boss? No. I want to stay. And, choosing that, you will automatically exit your ship. As you exit the ship, you carefully slide the jetpack on your back. Of course, if you didn't have the jetpack at this point, you'd just drift randomly in space and die, with no idea that there even is a jetpack to get anywhere in the game, and no idea how to get one, even if you did. Because the game doesn't tell you! Fortunately, we did get the jetpack. So we can zoom on over there. Now you can see there's guns on the back of the ship. And no, those aren't just decorative. Well, looky here! You are floating in space, just outside the biggest darn spaceship you've ever seen. You see a door. Perhaps it is a way in. All doors usually are. Um, let's save here. So like I said, the, uh... Guns that you could see are not decorative if you try to leave the screen. Painfully slowly. Oh, I thought you could. Maybe only in some directions? Yes. 
You get to the guns, and they blow you up good. Key haw The inhabitants of this vessel apparently do not appreciate your desire to sightsee. I guess it's a good idea not to be wandering around the outside of this ship. You were a carbon-based being. Now, you're just carbon. Uh, this wrong spelling of your... one of my pet peeves, anyway. Alright, we'd better stay here, then. It appears to be a standard airlock. There's a handle off to the side. It's a handle. You're next to a large hatch in the side of the ship. Uh, does anything here smell? First, you would have to take off your helmet. And that's not a very good idea. Not through your helmet. Okay, well, let's just try and open the... Uh, Airlock. I think if you wait too long, your jetpack runs out and you die as well. Luckily, it has this manual release. And now the jetpack is gonna fill anyway. Well, it did say in the description in the inventory that it was a really used jetpack. And I guess they weren't wrong. Now where are we? It appears to be a de decontamination unit. Something like the ones used to zap Andromeda and cockroaches aboard the Arcada. You wonder what it's here for? Well, I'm guessing it uh, might zap me. And I'm also guessing somebody might come... Um, ...here. So we better take cover. In case they do because we don't want to be spotted. Your overheating jetpack lies smoking on the floor. You hope that it doesn't explode. The airlock door looks unfortunately thick and sturdy. There seems to be some sort of special door control panel. It requires some sort of special key keycard, which you obviously don't have. Which also means we cannot get out of here without external help. Which should arrive soon. It's still us, Roger Wilco, janitor sub extraordinaire. It appears to be some sort of high tech fire droid. Yeah, real high tech, because if you look closely, it is actually carrying a bucket of water. Well, this is our chance to get out of here. And we are inside the Deltor. All we gotta do is find the star generator and... Well, blow it up, basically. Before the Sarians can use it in their plans of galactic domination. Well, um, we'll see if we can uh, make some headway on infiltrating this uh, ship in the next video. Welcome back. We've arrived on the Deltor. You're in some sort of storage room. A large trunk occupies the center of the room. Perhaps one of the little Sarians is away at enemy eviscerating training camp. The trunk is unremarkable in every way. It is remarkable only in the fact that it is unremarkable. Two enormous storage vaults take up the whole wall of the rule wall of the room. An air shaft protrudes from the wall above your head. It is covered by a vent grill. Anything here have a smell? You can't smell anything beyond the general smell of Sarians, which is unpleasant. These guys definitely need a change in diet. Well, let's uh, see if we can go anywhere else. I'm sure there's no danger. Uh, on second thought, let's try something else. Well, there's actually two ways to get uh, past here. You can either um, use your um, army knife to open the trunk, in which case you'll get carried off, or you can move the trunk over to the air vent, then try and open that, which is what I'm going to do. Your hands by themselves are incapable of opening it. Well, we can use the uh, army knife for that, I do believe. Uh, 
and now we are in the air ducts. Fortunately, we're not using magnets to climb the air ducts, because, well, anybody who's seen that particular episode of Mythbusters know what the results of that would be. It'd be quite noisy. And uh, here is another exit. Let's see if we can uh, get out of there. With a mighty, well, wimpy kick, you manage to hurt your foot. However, the vent grill opens. Hmm, now where are we? If you'd used the um, open the trunk route, you'd get in the trunk and then get carried here. The floor's nice and shiny. The room is similar to the storage room but with a large machine installed in one bulkhead. Behind the glass door of the machine, you can see a load of dirty Sarian uniform components. This is almost certainly a cheap Sarian knockoff of the genuine Clensomatic rinse and dip used to launder the crew uniforms aboard the Arcada. You see a hint of scaly dandruff. It smells waxy. Just what you thought, waxy build-up. You'd be ashamed if you were in charge of this floor. Ugh, it tastes like detergent. Well, that's not surprising. Well, maybe we can get ourselves a disguise from uh, the laundry machine. Or at the very least, the helmet. Hey, wait a second. That wasn't what I was trying. Uh-oh, you hear someone coming. Which, in this game, is not a good thing, usually. Yikes. Well, at least Roger is clean now. Although, he might actually be sick. Hey, well, that's one hell of a coincidence. Darn static cling. Hey, look at that. By the most amazing stroke of luck, you've traded in your extremely conspicuous Xenon spacesuit for a Sarian officer's uniform, complete with helmet. Searching the pockets of your newly found disguise, you find the number of possessions you were packing has been greatly reduced. In fact, lost in that limbo void to where socks and, socks and baseballs disappear is everything but the data cartridge. Well, that's useful then, because we don't need anything but the data cartridge from here on. And, hey, it looks like there's something on the floor there. Old fabric softener sheets rest on the floor here. Hey, there's an ID card there also. Well, that could be useful. Damn it. Well, um, I guess that with this new outfit, it might be safe to roam the hallways of this here ship. You close your eyes in hopes your death will be quick, but to your surprise, the guards do not notice you. In fact, you think your uniform is that of a higher-ranking Sarian officer worth sucking up to. Cool. Very cool indeed. I wonder why, what this elevator it does. It's just another one of those ugly Sarian guards. I wonder where this elevator goes, this protecting it. This is an elevator. Yep, more pipes. You're in a brightly colored hallway of Water Deltor. Two elevators dominate the upper level. Um, let's see what's down here first, before we go and uh, mucking about with some elevators. There are a lot of things here that have descriptions. Hey, we've seen this room before. Only when we were on the lower level before. It looks like some kind of experimental orifice. You're standing in the upper level of one of the Del Tor's hallways. You can't help but be, be, be impressed with the subtle decoration and color sense shown by the Syrians in their ship design. An offensive smell permeates the entire ship. You really don't want to put your mouth on that. I guess so. 
Well, nothing here, so... Very annoying sound coming from that thing, by the way. Hmm. More annoying sounds. Two zapping, crackling globes spew forth gargantuan amounts of sizzling raw energy. Kinda neat, huh? Back on the Arcada, we couldn't look at stuff that wasn't on the same level as us, but here apparently we can. Since your X-ray vision specs have not yet arrived in the mail, you don't even know this room is over there, so quit messing around and do something useful. But we can look at those things for some reason. It appears to be a standard driver's side rear view mirror, probably standard on all ships of this class. What? It's a panel of lights, again, which you shouldn't be able to see. It's one of those gruesome red-suited Syrians. It's patrolling the hallways, looking for intruders to toast. Well, fortunately, we aren't on that side. Anyways, we're in disguise. You can't smell that from up here. Oh, I guess so. You're uncertain whether, this, certain whether this is a Walwoodian cryobaric hypersleep chamber, or the transmission out of a late model Buick Skylark. Well, I certainly wouldn't know. It's just another one of those ugly Syrian gods. Oh well, nothing here either. And they salute me when we go by. Which is fun. Hmm. Looks like there's an elevator here. An elevator door to the lower level. You can't actually go right here, do you? I wanna see what's down here. Yep, more pipes. These egg-shaped lights, if that's what they are, are just another example of the rather whimsical designs you've observed on this ship. For ugly, smelly, green, planet-destroying murderers, the Syrians appear to have a great sense of aesthetics. Well, great. It's a port of some kind. You've seen more empty space than you care to ever again. It smells like transparent. It tastes like build-up glass cleaner. You can't imagine that's going to taste good. The Syrian smells so horrible, it's hard to smell anything else. We're actually getting pretty close to the ending of the game, which you can tell by the score. So I'm trying to get the best use we can out of all the humorous messages before we uh, definitively uh, say goodbye to this game. Hey, now we're down here. The globes crackle with many colors of light, and you suspect even less helpful manifestation of the electromagnetic spectrum. It looks like some kind of cartridge reader. Maybe the cartridge you have will work in it. And in fact, it does. Like I said, this is the second place where you can read the cartridge, just in case you've forgotten the code or hadn't read it before. It's pretty nice of the game that they give you uh, a second chance to read that, but we've already read it, so we don't need to. You get no clues from the smell. If it smells like Sarians, how good do you suppose it's going to taste? Good point. Oh well, I'm guessing um, there's not much else we can do here. This doorway leads back to the storage room, where we've already been, so that's rather pointless. So, all that's left is those two elevators on the other side. We're gonna see where those lead. Maybe somewhere interesting. Uh, we can only use this one, because this one is being guarded. Well, let's see where it goes. And it goes to another level, which we'll have to explore in the next video. Welcome back, we're at the lower level of the uh, Deltor. Let's see what we can discover here. From the looks of them, these clubs contain high-power Wally coils, coils, each one capable of discharging jillions of volts of deadly electricity. 
bajillions of volts. That's a lot. Your engineering expertise informs you that this is a car carelessly discarded Williamson coil. What engineering expertise? Of course, it could also be a humongous escargot. Quite possible. <laughs> it looks like a great place to curl up and take a nap. Too bad you're in such a hurry. It's an expensive looking machine that goes ping. I prefer Pong. Uh, this close to the Wally Globes, all your nose hairs are standing on end. Garlic, chives, butter. Nice recipe for snakes. Uh, snails, whatever. It smells expensive. I don't think you want to do that. Oh, yeah, I agree. Oh, come on. Not bad. Oh, well, let's see what uh, we can find around here. And... Ooh, this looks interesting and important, considering the guard. Kawabunga will we'll go. This is it. It's the unimaginably powerful star generator, which must not at any cost be allowed to remain in the hands of the evil Syrians. But you knew that, right? Of course we did. Something tells me this guard isn't going to make it easy to uh, get close to it, though. This is the biggest, toughest, not to mention ugliest, Syrian guard you've ever seen. At present, he is diligently guarding the star generator from intruders such as yourself. He is wearing some sort of gadget on his belt, but from here you can't tell what its purpose might be. And we can't touch it. It actually looks like it might be protected by some kind of force fields, although it doesn't look like I can actually look at that. And these things do nothing when you try and look at them. Nor does the space outside. You're in another area of the Deltor. Can we talk him into letting us through? This is a guy of few war words, none of them for you. If you touch him, he might touch you back. Yeah, we're gonna have to find a way to get around this guy or knock him out or something. So let's see what lies to the left of here. This is the same expensive looking machine that goes ping. It's either a mega frequency wide band spectrophonic analyzer module or one of those really old table model radios. I'm guessing the former. A panel of flashing lights. Printed near the bottom of, in tiny precise letters are the words ODA generator, model EC54, Delta backup unit number one. Oh, that makes it perfectly clear then. What a perfectly useless looking piece of decoration. You're continuously astonished by the Sarian decorative scheme. You're on the lower level of one of the hallways on the Deltor. Why not? It's in plain view. The whole ship smells like Sarians. Ah, you can't smell anything. The static electricity clinging to the spectrophonic module tickles your tongue, not unpleasantly. If you're into that sort of thing, don't put that in your mouth, you don't know where it's been. Well, it's been right there, I guess. Sarian cooties are everywhere. Well, let's take this elevator up to the upper level. See what we can find here. Interesting. Hmm. Another one of these thingies. Descriptions are getting less uh, creative, aren't they? It seems obvious to you that Wally Wood did some of these, uh, did some time designing Sarian hardware. I have to admit, I have no idea who Wally Wood is. It sort of looks like a speaker, doesn't it? But it isn't. This, uh, okay, this is still the same. A subtle odor, a subtle ozone odor clings to the egg-shaped doodad. You get no clues from the smell. Tongue zaps are no fun. 
Oh, it's mostly talk messages, which are no fun. Let's see. Bottled energy. Like everywhere... Uh, like everything around here, the pipes are extremely colorful. It makes you wonder if the Sarians got a good deal on paint. Either that or they're colorblind. You're on the upper level of one of the hallways of the del on the Deltor. Just another one of those fascinating bits of alien hardware. Broom at the ready, the cleaning droid waits for something useful to do. The electric charge around the globe tickles your nose hairs. Smells sort of blue, but is in fact purple. The heady sense of petroleum distillates and Syrian refuse titillates your nostrils. You really don't want to lick this. If it smells like Syrians, that's all. You can't be serious. Yes, I am. All right, enough mucking about. Fooey, you stupid man, I spit on you. But you can't. What do we have here? Looks like a weapons locker. Oh, welcome to the weapons dispensary, I guess. I've got an IQ of 5,000, but they feel I'm only good enough to fetch weapons. Like some whimpering puppy dog. You'll have to show me your ID card so I can scurry off and fetch your weapon. Why they don't just wire me into the ship's system so I would know who you are, even without an ID card, is beyond even my supreme intellect. In case you can't tell, this here droid is obviously based on Marvin the Paranoid Android from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Life. Don't talk to me about life. I've got this awful pain in the diodes on my left side. You carbon-based lifeforms are so annoying. My counterpart at Yulin's Flats on Corona told me about this one pesky humanoid in a grungy blue spacesuit who just kept pestering him. Oh, why does committing genocide seem such a good idea right now? Hey, is he talking about us? When did he have the chance to talk to that droid? A robot serves behind the counter. Its appearance is that of a plain and unintelligent droid, but then looks can be deceiving, as in your case. Ah, it doesn't even say anything. Well, are we going to do something or are you practicing to walk? This is a storeroom where a great deal of the Deltor's weapons are kept. Various other weapons are firmly secured to the exterior of the small structure. On a counter in front of the storeroom are two loose gas grenades. Hmm. Gas grenades, eh? That might be useful, but something tells me he won't appreciate it if we, uh... Marvin! He won't appreciate it if we try and go behind the counter. Oh dear, how inconvenient. Another life form is in a restricted area. How your race manages not to vaporize itself into extinction is beyond me. I guess I'll have to be polite about this. Pardon me for terminating you. The hell? Where did that come from? Thank you for playing Space Quest 1. Too bad you failed miserably and doomed all of your people to a horrible death at the hands of the Sarians. You quickly glance about the room to see if anyone saw your silly mistake. Better luck next time. If you do that while he's fetching your weapon, he just shoots you, but uh, <laughs> I never saw the anvil before. Uh, the trick is to get him to fetch our weapon, and then do it while he's not looking. Oh, how clever. You have an ID card, and... 
my my, what a <laughs> lovely photo of a pre proto organic biped you have too. I guess I'll use my vast resources to fetch your silly weapon for you. Please wait here, if you can handle such a simple command. As soon as he goes in there, we gotta fetch us some grenades. Can only take one at a time, I think. We only need one anyway. Unless you're really stupid and miss. Which is possible. And we got a weapon, which is also nice. I'm guessing that weapon won't really help against the big Delta or the big uh, Therian guard at the star generator, but the gas grenade might. You have a small, innocuous looking grenade. It's a pulse, pulse ray laser pistol. Remember, this isn't a play toy. Well, let's see if we can uh, get rid of that guard using the toys we just uh, acquired in the next video. Welcome back. We've gotten uh, some weapons, a gun and a gas grenade. I want to see if we can use that gas grenade to get rid of this here guard. Pretty easy, just stand above him and drop it. If you drop it somewhere else, um, well, you'll miss and you need the other one. Get two chances, or we'll just drop it in the right spot, bounces on his head, and he drops. You notice the remote control, the a remote control device on the guard's belt. Wow, keen eyes if you can spot that from here. Well, let's uh, head over there. Should be uh, pretty easy. I mean, we're in disguise and we've got the guard knocked out, so nothing is going to go wrong. Except that. Quick! Get the helmet, you stupid dolt! It's not as if that droid was moving that quickly. My, aren't you the clumsy one? Because of your inability to walk without falling on your face, your helmet has been collected by the trash droid. Now you've blown your cover. The Syrians are sure to shoot first and ask questions later. In which case, we'll have to uh, shoot back. You need want to do it at least once, because it gives you points. But it's pretty difficult to not do that at least once. It's not actually all that hard. Because they won't hit you the first time around. So as long as you are um, decent at clicking in the right spot, you'll usually survive. There he is, the guards. But it seems the star generator is protected by a force field. I'm not entirely sure if that force field uh, zaps you. And uh, in case it does... Hey. A receptor for some kind of remote control signal. The Sputnik, it says in sort of fake Cyrillic. Um, the Sputnik doesn't look like that. Um... Okay, that was a stupid message, by the way. Hey, one shouldn't attempt to manipulate oneself in a family game. Let's see. There's a force field around the star generator. You will need to turn it off first. Well, the guard had a remote control, so... I'm betting that's for the uh, star generator. Let's see. This is a small, single-function remote control. You press the start on the remote, and the force field around the star generator begins to deplete. Yay! 
And we've got 187 points, so we're nearly there. Now let's uh, see if we can set this baby to self-destruct. Hey, we can actually enter numbers here instead of weird symbols. Well, the self-destruct code was 5454. Self-destruct engaged! Have a nice day! Well, something tells me that we'd better get the hell out of here, because the cartridge said that everything in a 5 kilometer radius was uh, in danger when this thing goes off. So we have 5 minutes to get the hell away from here. The pulsing energy surging from the star generator tells you that it has been activated and you had better quit hanging around staring at the pretty colors. Still doesn't smell like anything. Does the Sputnik smell like anything? No. Well, there's only one place in the ship we haven't been yet, which is the uh, guarded elevator. But now we have a gun. Um... So we can shoot the guard. Hee hee hee, now you are dead. And we are not. Let's see where this leads. Hopefully uh, to some way off this ship. Actually, have we been to the left there? Oh wait, that's where we came from, of course. Ah, I'm such an idiot sometimes. Hey, this looks like an escape pod. That would be useful. And what's that thing? It's definitely some sort of thing. Gee, that's helpful. We're in another area of the Deltor. This must be the captain's personal escape pod. Um... I think if you go back up and come back down, it might be gone, actually. You're really way too busy for this, Roger. You're wasting valuable time here. No time for funny messages. Get off the ship. The ship could blow up in a million fiery pieces while you waste time licking the only thing that can get you off it in one piece. Well, it's my time to waste. Well, let's, uh... Take the escape pod! And get on out! One final uh, ding ding ding. We now have 201 of 201 points. Isn't that nice? And there we go. And there goes the Deltor in an earth shattering kaboom. Too good for him, I see. Let's head on home to enjoy the spoils of our victory! Hey, look. Roger Wilco, we, the people of Xenon, extend our limitless appreciation and eternal gratitude for your acts of heroism. He looks like King Graham with that hat. And hey, look, it's the two dudes from Andromeda. Because of your bravery, the planet Xenon, and indeed the entire galaxy, has been saved from domination by the evil, and not to mention ugly, Syrians. It's my honor to present you with the coveted Golden Mop, a symbol of pride and accomplishment to members of your esteemed profession. Uh, yay, a Golden Mop, that's really what I was hoping for. Henceforth, and for all time, you will be known as Hero of Xenon. Until the next game, anyway. Watch the spaceship, and by the way, that's the airship that goes by. Well, Roger, you did it. You saved the galaxy, received your profession's most noble tribute, and got the girl. And somebody shot down the airship. 
Wait a minute. That wasn't any girl. Sorry. Well, you got the mop anyway. From now on, Xenon's your oyster. All you have to do now is sit back and let the book and movie offers roll in. And who knows, maybe you'll even have a series. And now, as the sun sets on the peaceful blue planet, Xenon and Roger Wilco's first adventure, yes, I'm afraid there are more, we hope you will remain in your seat long enough for, to let us express our limitless appreciation. Yeah, I cheated a little bit there with the text, because those text boxes go way too quickly to read out loud. Well, that's the first Space Quest game. It's pretty short, but it sets the stage for what would be one of my favorite series of games. The, rem the remake uh, adds a lot. It has nice B-movie inspired graphics, um, lots of extra humor, and awesome music. Like most point-and-click remakes of partial based games, it is easier than the original, but that's not really a bad thing considering the original was incredibly hard to figure out at times. So, until Space Quest 2, I bid you adieu.